Okay. Hello, you guys. Let me make sure that the audio is okay. Ooh, I just got a random head sort of <laughs> in my side when I moved over. I don't know how that happened. Um, but hello, you guys. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing good. Um, also, don't don't pay any attention to the fact that some of my paintings are down. I um had my show on Saturday, and despite like it being a few like a day or so now since I have not put away my stuff so some of like my paintings or things might be slightly out oh I don't know why I have this random paint every time I move that's weird Let's see if I can stretch it out um that shows that I need to like stretch and work out and do yoga probably there's also a cord that keeps getting I needed to not so I don't accidentally like pull something down from my PC <laughs> like I move my foot and all of a sudden everything just decides to stay like fall but anyways <laughs> hello and happy Monday I hope everybody had a pretty good weekend um I don't know why I'm like I'm trying to get myself comfortable because there's like this very random feeling in my back but it'll probably go away as i sit here but i hope that everybody had a good weekend i kind of just was chilling i did an art well that's a lie i did an art show on saturday <laughs> so no i was not chilling i was very busy and i was super tired by the time i came back and it was only till five it was only technically five hours um oh my gosh hello also i must i must apologize um because, like, after you raided it the last time, I realized, I think I, like, said your name completely wrong. It's like, you know how sometimes, like, when you're in the heat of the moment, when people raid you, you, like, you see the names and it's just a jumble and you just don't, like, letters and you don't read it properly. And then, like, after the fact, you look at the person's name and you're just like, oh, a small sprite. I don't even want to imagine what I said before, but... Welcome. <laughs> Do you want me to call you small? Do you want me to call you Sprite? Let me give you a shout out as well. Do do do. Get that in there. Well, not me misspelling it too. I can't even. Can't spell. Can't write. <laughs> Oh my god, I mispronounced everything. No worries at all. There was a time I went to welcome someone in. It said hello. <laughs> nah, I, yeah, I feel you. I mispronounce people's names so much accidentally. And like, I don't know what it is. It's like, I feel like t unless like you stream, you don't like know. Like every streamer knows exactly the feeling of like accidentally like, mispronouncing names that are so simple. <laughs> But welcome! How was your weekend? Hopefully it was good. Today is a slightly special stream because thanks to Jellyfish Parade, I get to check out this game a little early before the release. I'm so very excited. And it's a perfect way to end off Black History Month because it is by a Black and Indigenous Women of Color duo. Um, So perfect, right? And it's an indie game. It's Indie Monday. Just like, this is perfect timing. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna check this out. And honestly, I'll probably just read you guys the little blurb of the summary of the game. Plus, um, before I start, because even though we're on the starting screen, I'm gonna close out the game, turn it back on. Because like, when I first started the game, cause I always, you know, obviously start the game so that I can get to the screen. Like there was this cute, little like trailer in the very beginning i'm like they put so much work into it i want you guys to see it so but the trailer i think only triggers when you like start the game first and like you have to not click anything so that it doesn't automatically go to the start screen so i'm gonna do that for you guys plus of course it also is good because it lets you guys see the trigger warnings if there are stuff because i know that they said flashing lights um what else was it? There was a couple of things, but that's why it's going to be good if I look back at it. Because um, then you guys can also see 
what it is for content warnings and we'll go forward. One thing I do know is that this game, I believe is broken up into like three parts, so three chronicles. And in each chronicles, there are two new like NPC romances that you can have from what I remember seeing. And I'm gonna read through the little thing for you guys so you can see. But yes, new game today. So very excited for this. Um, I've been I've been waiting <laughs> to check this game out for a couple weeks now. So how are you guys doing? How was your weekend? My weekend was busy. I had my art show because I know I told you guys um, that I was gonna have my art show on Saturday. It went really good. Sam actually helped me. My mod rare who's here. Um, so I had my show on Saturday went really really good way better than i thought um it was black history month like market in a coffee shop and what they did which was awesome was to kind of like help out black um artists and small businesses they did this market with no fee so it was no commission taken from your sales and no like table fee or space fee rent fee anything like that it was just completely free so anything you made that day was just all you. So it, it went really good. And everybody seemed to really like my stuff, which made me very happy. Um, so now I feel like I know what I want to like continue to do, what things I want to get more of, stuff like that, especially for like more markets and more shows. It was a good first show of the year, I will say. It was a good first market of the year, I think. So I'm very excited. Which, by the way, if anybody does ever, like, want to see my stuff and wishes they could go to the markets, but, like, obviously y'all live someplace else. I do actually have a shop and everything inside of the my markets are in my shop. So, I figure I might as well let y'all know since I was talking about my, my show. But, yeah. But, weekend went good. Thank you, Jakara. I started... So I had forgotten about this lipstick. It was the Fenty black one. I forget the name of it, but it's the black one, black Fenty lip lipstick. And like, I hadn't used it in a while before I was using the Beauty Bakery, um, like matte one where, you know, you know the ads where they like put the lipstick on their hand and they put it underneath the water and then they put dish soap on it and they try to rub it off and it doesn't come off. It was one of those, but like, you know, sometimes you do want your lipstick to come off. Like, I cannot get that lipstick off my face unless I use a makeup wipe. Like, that's the, that's the only way to get that lipstick off my face. So I saw a TikTok that was like, oh, well, how do people, like, put on the lipstick and not get, like, you know, like, make it look like a butthole in there? <laughs> like, how you layer it. So you do a layer, you blot, do a layer, you blot, do a layer, you blot, until it's the actual, like like um intensity that you want and i did that this was like five, like three four or five layers of black lipstick but it's pretty good it's pretty good aside from when i did my market because i had a mask on and i had to keep my mask on because this smeared all over my face i looked like a gremlin like a vampire that had already been decaying <laughs> that's how i look <laughs> on Saturday but it was fine because I had no real reason to take my mask off anyway because I was out in public so I just had my mask on anyway but um but yeah that was my weekend hopefully you guys had a good weekend too I do also have a timer by the way for anybody who might be interested in the game and I do also have commands which are in the um the title but I'll show you I have one for the game itself oh wait i put that in wrong i have to fix that and i have one for the devs this is what happens when you utilize like um stuff from other timers let me just fix that one because it is not on steam that's not the link i wanted to put wrong <laughs> Uh, what, what am I looking for? Stream elements, that's what it is. At least I realize this now, while well, I can still do this. And then I'll start to read the stuff, and then I'll go into the game! We'll start playing. Because I'm quite excited about it. 
want to see how it goes. And also, despite the fact I do tend to play like narrative games, I don't actually play many like visual novels like this, like the ones where um, you have like the various romance options and all that stuff. Like I usually don't tend to play those, not even necessarily because I don't want to, I just never looked in, never get to look into them to get a chance to check them out. Chatbot, there we go, chat commands. Fix that. It's cause I have a gazillion different, there we go. Bam, okay, cool. Now it's saved, now it'll be right. So make sure, yes, okay, cool. So now we have the actual Steam link. There is no Switch link that was for a different game. <laughs> and we have the command for if you want to just learn more about Jellyfish Parade, which are is the dev team that made the game. Because they, they make other types of visual novels as well. And they're all, from what I could tell from like the itch.io, they're all pretty much people of color that are the main focus, which is always awesome to be able to like have those types of visual novels. So just to give you a little bit about it because I have it up. And also I like their little description. So that's also why I'm gonna read it. <laughs> but once again, we're going back to like the Android feel because you know, we're playing Steel Rising on Fridays and it, it's, it's kind of fitting that we're gonna play like a game now with another Android. But basically, Aviv is an android content with the life of weaving silk tapestries alongside her master. But when he dies, his family sells her off due to her being a rogue, a self-aware android. Thrown into a refuge for rogues, the newly freed Arif must find her place amongst them and answer the question once and for all. How does one weave a new identity when the strings to the old have been cut? Inspired by lore from the likes of Cupid and Psyche, the Wizard of Oz, Pinocchio, and other beloved tales, Belle Automata is the journey of an android reinventing herself. Join Arif and the others as they forge their own paths dealing with love, self-acceptance, and grief for a life left behind. Yeah, I think it's a cute little, like, little summary. So that's what we're going to be playing. I'm going to turn off the game to turn it right back on so that you guys could kind of, like, see the little trailer because... I mean, they, they put so much work into it. It was when at first, like, because, you know, sometimes I'll do trailers and it's just like very, very short. And I'm like, OK, this that's not actually anything. But they have like kind of like the credits in it and stuff like that. So I kind of want to let you guys see that. And then we'll go into the game. Mac, hello. How are you? Welcome in. Let me give you a shout out. How was your weekend? How have you been? There we go. All right. So let's move me over. And once again, as always, I don't think I'm gonna need to change where my webcam is, but if I end up blocking stuff on the screen, I will of course change where my webcam is when we um get into the actual game. But I'm gonna show the, the little trailer first. I'm gonna turn this up and if anything, I'm expecting the trailer to be loud, so I'm not gonna really talk. When we get into the actual game itself though, if things still feel very loud, let me know. I will try to adjust the settings because I already kind of turned down the background music. I didn't touch the dialogue yet because I wasn't sure if for me, the dialogue was gonna affect us much because I try not to talk over dialogue anyway. So I figure I'm not gonna be competing too much when it comes to dialogue. Um, so you guys will just let me know about audio. Weekend was cool, hosted my first jam session last night. Nice. I'm glad that that didn't go good. I should say, did it go good first? Cause I was gonna say, I'm glad it went good, but you didn't actually tell me that part. I'm assuming it was, that it was since you said it was cool, but I, I gotta make sure. All right, so let's get into this. Hello. <laughs> because of course, of course, Streamlabs wants to do this, which by the way, just to, just to preface this, 
I am slowly, finally making the transition to OBS. I am just trying to make sure I have everything right. So the only things now that I have to do <laughs> to get OBS to work is I have to now figure out how to do my widgets because OBS does their widgets differently than Streamlabs. So I have to actually use a separate program to use browser sources for my widgets. So that's the only thing stopping me from going live with OBS right now. I know OBS has issues too. I know. But at least I could like set my tags on O. At least I could set stuff, edit my actual stream thing going live through OBS. I have to set my tags manually, which I did not check today. Let me make sure I set my tags. I didn't set my tags today. Um, but yes, I'm about to, I'm going to show the thing because I forgot that sometimes Streamlabs likes to be finicky when I turn off games now, apparently. I just... I don't know why suddenly that's a thing. It used to not be for me, but now suddenly, um, it just, it, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, cool. It's not good. But, um, yes, but we're back. <laughs> we're back. We're good. I'm going to show you guys the intro part. So, oh, and then as you can see, there's depictions of internalized ableism, negative body image, and brief flashing lights. So take that with what you will. Those are that's the uh, the content warning for the game. Okay, now hopefully it will work properly. Master, I wish you were alongside me. Wow, your model is adorable. I've never seen an android like you before. If it were my choice, I wouldn't leave the mental welfare of the young master to a stranger. But I am not as foolhardy as Master Roman. If you're not a fan of me now, then you will be soon. You'll have to excuse me. I was deep in thought. What were you saying? I know what it's like to feel thrown away. To be thrown away. You have a new life now. Now maybe we'll get the chance to start over. Don't waste it. Your car already simping. <laughs> Same though. Nightmare Prince and Roman. <laughs> but wasn't that like a nice little trailer? I was like, there's no way I could not show you guys that. They put so much work into it. I thought it was nice. So I figured I was like, that would be a nice little peek. Nice little first thing into it. Now why would it autocorrect Klaus to Kraus? Man, I don't know what autocorrect is doing. Also, if you catch me doing a lot of like stretches or weird movements, it's because for some reason, I don't I don't know how this started. The second I sat down in my chair and began to stream, I had this like very weird, awkward, like feeling slash pain in my like side slash back area. And I don't know what's caused it. Um, and I I feel like I need to have my back broken <laughs> to get it out. So like, no, because no stretching I'm doing is like actually fixing it. And it's like, it's this weird feeling. So I might not be able to sit back like I normally would because it makes it hurt a little more. Um, I don't know where it came from. So just FYI, if you do catch me moving a lot, I mean, I know I tend to shake anyway when I um, am streaming, but like if I'm like literally just moving a lot, that's probably why today. Um, I didn't check. I'm assuming that this is keyword in mouse. That's my assumption. 
film. Let's get into it. I remember the first time I opened silicon-coated eyelids to see my master. Oh, I think that worked. I managed to get her booted up. Those were the first words he said to me. Can I just say I'm so happy that this seems like it is fully voiced? Like, cause not gonna lie, one of my problems sometimes with why I don't end up playing these games is cause I don't always feel like reading, like, aloud all the time. So I am so happy that it is voiced. <laughs> What's your name? You machines have names, don't you? I am the Dreamweaver, model T95. She's so cute. No, no, he said. A name isn't a set of numbers and letters, it's... The definition had immediately come to mind, so I recited it out loud, droning the words flatly. Also, small, small side note, let me know, uh, is the um, audio good? Or like the, the music and stuff? A word or set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. That's right. So, what's yours? The memory of staring at him blankly is so clear that I can practically see him in front of me, even now. I do not have one, I've replied. Well, that doesn't seem right. How about this? I'll give you one. Fair warning, though. I haven't named anyone since my kids were born. <laughs> and then he did it. We're gonna keep the- the- there- the- 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 Cause technically I could delete it. I like her name. So we're gonna- we're gonna keep Arif. He called me Arav. Arav. I loved him like a father. Why did I pronounce it Arif? <laughs> See, I can't pronounce nothing. I, I can't stand myself. The music could be turned down slightly, but otherwise front, fine. Cool. Is that better? I'm just happy I have access to the um, options pretty easily. My master, no, my father, was a weaver of traditional silks, and I? I was the machine that worked tirelessly at his side. For decades, we weaved the highest quality of silks alongside each other. We were creative soulmates. Every thread I wove matched him in every way. Maybe it's because of that, because my master treated me like a person, that I became this way. I like the, the voice they have for her. Alive. Sentient. Sapient. So you can imagine how I felt when his family said those words that I will never forget. Hey, Lenny! That old Dreamweaver model? I guess we can auction it off. Grandpa's had it for so long that I doubt anyone would want it now that he's passed. Oh, that's so mean. You know, this very much gives me the vibes of like when we when we played Rumu and like the the husband kind of just was treating Sabrina like like it was like a appliance, but they literally gave her sentience and emotions and then was upset that she didn't feel good enough. Like that's kind of how it, how this feels. An it, not a person, but a, a thing. A thing to be given away without any input of her own. And here I am, outside the home of my new master. Look at that house. How much money does your new master have? I mean, I guess 
But then I was gonna say, but then again, I guess you have to have tons of money in order to like have an Android. But then like, who knows how this future is? Maybe everybody has an Android. Could be like iRobot. You know, like every everybody in the grandma had an Android and iRobot. I reach into my pocket for the invoice I was given to deliver to him. Scanning the page, I come to the spot where it mentions my purchaser by online handle. The Nightmare Prince. The name doesn't give me much confidence in his having a kind personality, so I focus on my surroundings as if I can glean some part of his personage from his home. The building is large and modern with sprawling water on either side of the main path to the house. Colorless with darkened windows, I cannot help the fear that weighs down my chest. I've stood here for an hour, unable to run away but unable to enter either. What would my old master say? He would say, breathe, Horev. So I do. My chest fills with air, but I admit that it doesn't really calm me. I suppose breathing is just one of many human habits I, com I copied from my master, former master. I fuss with the edge of my dress, trying to keep calm, but even so, I can hear the fans that keep my central system from overheating, spinning at maximum speed. Master, I wish you were alongside me. But then, if my master was still living, I wouldn't be here in the first place. That is true. I shut my eyes. There's gotta be a bright side to this situation. I take a moment to calm down. What's something I can be glad about? I'm still in one piece? I have a new life now? I mean, I'm gonna say I'm still in one piece because to be to be frank, they, they could have used her for parts <laughs> if that's the way that like the owner like the the family was talking like she just was like an old android <laughs> so at least we're still in one piece at least his family didn't have me processed into scrap yeah <laughs> it's a low bar but it's one i find acceptably comforting i don't know why my nose feels so weird <laughs> If my new master wanted me for parts, I'd already be in pieces. It's a strange thought, but one that encourages me. Comparatively, maybe the Nightmare Pin Prince isn't so bad after all. I am delaying, aren't I? You sure are. <laughs> my finger hovers over the doorbell. Once I press this button, there's no going back. Let's do it. I press it lightly with trembling fingers and shut my eyes. I want to believe that my new master is kind, but instead, I just feel dread. Of all the online handles to have, why Nightmare Prince? It's edgy. Edgelord, that's why. <laughs> Wonder away. No problem, Jakar, take your time. I open my eyes quickly, only to see another android, his bright yellow highlights giving him away. He stands tall, a butler's uniform cut across his stiff formal form. I measure up the cup of his the, the cut of his silhouette, his measurements uploading directly into my mind for future reference. I am Victor. You're the Dreamweaver model, I presume. Yes, my name is Arev. I reach into my pocket with my proof of receipt. Your master purchased me, but I'm afraid I don't know his name. Victor barely glances at the slip of paper. You won't be needing that for much longer. Toss it if you wish. He's like, listen, you already bought. It don't matter no more. You don't need no receipt. We ain't returning you. Toss it? Throw it into a fire. Or, since we haven't one at our disposal, rip it apart. Whatever mm -hmm. way you think of, just be sure to destroy it. <laughs> I blink once, then twice. <laughs> My eyes drift downwards to stare down at the receipt. This is proof of ownership, and he wants me to destroy it? But without proof of purchase, I could run away. 
people would be none the wiser. Isn't your master worried about that? Like, nah. <laughs> Victor shrugs nonchalantly. The most prudent response is, where would you run to? But even that aside, it is still your choice. My master requested that I deliver that message to you, and so I have. It is up to you to destroy it or not. They really say, where, where you go, go. Come on, be for real. Where you, where you gonna run to? That's <laughs> what you told it. Up to me. Looking down at the paper, I hold it in my two hands. If I destroy this paper, then I will own myself. I rip it in two, the sound more satisfying than I imagined it would be. I toss it into the water below for good measure. Looking bemused, Victor beckons. Your digital copy has also been destroyed. Now then, follow me. Look at that house! As I walk behind him through automated doors, my nervousness swells like a balloon. The exhilaration wears off as soon as I'm in the house. Will I meet my new... well, not master? I suppose with no proof of purchase, I have no master now. My new... Employer? I echo him. Employer. The word feels like something precious on my tongue. Yes. Employer. Will I meet my new employer soon? You will not know. I feel like Rumu all over again. Greeting guests is my duty and mine alone. And you have been greeted. Now, on to the rules of the house. He holds out his hand. If you would allow me. Allow you to... what? Give you the house rules. Have you never shared data with another android before? I shake my head slowly. It's been a long time since I'd left the workshop, and longer since, still since I worked with another android. Instead of replying and making a further fool of myself, I take his hand. Right away, a small light begins to glow between our clasped, hand, clasped hands. The data packet he sends immediately flashing before my eyes. I quickly run through the new information. The list of house rules from the data transfer isn't very long, but two of the rules strike me as particularly bizarre. Do you have any questions? Josh! Welcome in. How are you doing? How was your weekend? <laughs> I do. I stare at him. Such as? Rule number one. I must never try to see the Nightmare Prince. And that's not all. Rule number seven states that I must never enter the Nightmare Prince's room for any reason. Now you know that means that we're gonna see him at some point and we're gonna end up having to enter the room at some point because they told us not to do it. So that means that now we have to do it. Like obviously now we have, now we have to meet the Nightmare Prince somehow, some way. I just got out of work getting a smoothie. Ooh, nice wet flavor are you getting? I'm doing good tonight. I'm doing good. We are checking out Bell Automata, where which I was very grateful to be able to get a code for this thanks to Jellyfish Parade. Um, so we are checking out this indie visual novel tonight to kind of help us end off Black History Month, you know? And another thing, you only refer to him as the Nightmare Prince. Doesn't he, you know, have a real name? Victor stares at me coolly. He does have a real name, yes. That is merely what he prefers to be called. Aside from that, those are statements, not questions. <laughs> These rules make it seem like I'll never meet my employer. That's the point. <laughs> That's because you will not. Hey. <laughs> That's not strange to you? No. Like, that's his employer, too. So, like, what's what's he supposed to do? <laughs> In any case, I am not completely certain why my master has chosen a Dreamweaver model for purchase when we do not have a loom here. As such, until he gives me a list of duties for you, you are free to do as you like. You have returned. Welcome back, Jakara. 
In the meantime, I will be cleaning. All right. I, I have a choice. Lengths, my former master, and I worked together for many years. Our work was always the same. Weaving silk tapestries, goodness gracious. Weaving silk tapestries of unrivaled skill for purchase day in and day out. I never had to think about what we would do. I always knew. If I have a choice though, then I'll choose explore the mansion. Forget cleaning, we ain't cleaning nothing. <laughs> he sounds a little jealous, maybe. He's like, why did you get to be um, employed here with no real purpose? Like, you just get to be do whatever, I have to clean. I was literally here to clean, that's all I can do. <laughs> I was cleaning cleaning because my room has to be cleaned to enjoy my new computer that comes on Wednesday. Hey, I'm so excited for you, Jakara. Also, I got an island green smoothie from Tropical Smoothie. Nice. I can never get green smoothies, though. I don't like them. They're too vegetable-y for me. Oh, I know it is snowing. Yeah, I think it's supposed to storm, actually, um, Josh. So, like, if you can get home... Is supposed to storm into tomorrow. Just FYI. Um, if you didn't know. Random, have you ever played in... Nope, I have not played an Ace Attorney game. I have not. You've never seen snow before? Aw. Uh, I mean, snow is cute, but, like, you're not really missing anything. Because, like, I can't talk for any place else, but, like, New York snow... Like, it's nice when it first falls, and then it's just dirty and nasty, and, like, it's not fun. Jumping over puddles in the crosswalk, it's not fun. Yeah, New York Snow is cute for a day. Like, when it first comes down. Like, not even a full day. It's like, while it's falling, it's cute. Once it's stopped falling and you've cleaned it, it's not cute anymore. If it's all right with you, I'd like to familiarize myself with my new home. Very well. I don't miss the I I don't miss the relief in in his face as I take my leave up the stairs. It's a good thing too, because I absolutely have no idea how to clean. <laughs> Oh man, I was in Jer New Jersey once and I snowed three times that week I was there. And I was asleep every time. Oh, poor Jakara. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mechanical walls line the house as I explore the holes freely. While most of the empty rooms I've seen so far are similar in function to the ones in my old workshop, others I have to reach into my database to learn their names. I wonder if my old master's home was like this. I'd never left the workshop when the shop was closed, since powering down there was was my norm. But it makes me feel lonely to think that while I did go out and run errands for him, the one thing I'd never done is seen my master's home. Maybe, maybe he didn't view me as real after all. The thought dims my mood as I walk down another hallway. Aw, poor Areve. Or is it a rev? Because I keep pronouncing their name wrong. Um, yes, 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 take the train, go home. Get home before it snows really bad. At the end of it, I can see a silvery door, the red embellish that red embellishing its surface like a warning. I bet that's the Nightmare Prince's door. Considering all the other rooms I've seen thus far were empty of both android and human alike, this locked one can only be one place. The room of the Nightmare Prince. Or whatever his name is. <laughs> whatever it is. Rev like the sound of an engine. <laughs> As if drawn in by magnetism, I slowly gravitate closer to the door. My curiosity gets the better of me as I reach out to touch the handle lightly. I don't turn it, but to my surprise, Mechanical sounds begin to click and clack as a slip of paper prints from the door. I take the sheet of paper and read the message written there aloud. Don't come in. 
And you edgy. Why are you so mad? <laughs> the Nightmare Prince. Hmm. Is that your real name? <laughs> A new sheet of paper pops out the door slot. I was once called something else, but that was a long time ago. What were you called? There's no response for a long moment until... <laughs> Another set of mechanical tapping sounds. My name? It doesn't matter. Not anymore. I see. Well, Nightmare Prince, I... I apologize for disturbing you, but I admit, I am curious about you. Curious? Hey, speaks. The voice that comes through the door is distorted and, if I am correct, filtered. It growls through the whole speakers, making me take a step back in surprise. I'd be intimidated if not for the fact that I'm much more intrigued. Clearly, my employer is a private person. But to be this private? To go to the extent of can concealing one's voice? Since when could an android be curious? Alarm floods through me. I forgot that such things are uncommon amongst androids. Perhaps I should have concealed the fact that I can feel since the reason I was sold in the first place is because I can feel. But now it's too late. Tell him the truth, answer his question with a question. <laughs> We're gonna answer his question with a question. Since when are purchasers of androids treated as employers? A good one. <laughs> There's a silence on the other side of the door. Then, to my great surprise, laughter. You're a funny one. But I suppose I'll let you keep your secrets if you let me keep mine. Yes, ma. Yes. It's difficult not to call him master, but at the same time, it wouldn't be the first time I've defied my programming. Satisfied with this at least as a meeting, I clasp my hands together. I'll be taking my leave now. The prince is silent as I depart, wondering what exactly my life will be with such strange companions now that my own future is in my hands. Fine, keep your secrets! <laughs> I returned downstairs to the room where I had first met Victor. At the sight of me, Victor's brows lift. Ah, there you are. What took so long? Were you settling in your bedroom? I have a room. Instead of replying, Victor sighs. Victor is so fed up. <laughs> Victor just met us. And they are so fed up. <laughs> <sighs> I'll show it to you once you get back. Back from where? The elder brother of the young master has asked to speak with you in the garden. Just like that, any comfort I felt before drains out of my body. The elder brother of the... Oh, thank you so much for the follow! 100 percent? Age 100%? Welcome in. <laughs> the elder brother of the young master? What does that make him to me? Oh, no problem. <laughs> no problem at all. I'm very excited. I'm enjoying it so far. <laughs> So also for anyone who doesn't know, because we do, I do have like a timer and stuff on. If anyone does want to check out the page for the devs, feel free. Same thing with if you would like to check out the game. You can do it there as well. But yeah, but welcome in, welcome in. Hopefully you're doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> you're still standing there. I'm aware. <laughs> To my surprise, Victor's eyes turn kind. Are you feeling unprepared? I am, yes. Take a moment to gather yourself. Roman is not an impatient man. Yes, I was hoping it was going to be Roman. 
gonna meet him. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing. I'm doing very good today. I have a re random pain on my side, but that's nothing. Nothing strange. <laughs> but yeah, we're doing good. I've been chilling before um, I started streaming today. With those few words, he turns away and continues cleaning. That's surprisingly encouraging of him. I take a few more minutes to gather myself before heading off to meet my employer's elder brother. Having already roamed the house, the layout is already mapped out by my internal systems. I find the garden easily. Look at this garden though! It's so like fancy and pretty. Like look at this dome. When I do, a man stands with his back facing me, not turning as I walk through sliding white doors. Ah, you must be Arev. The unfamiliar stranger turns towards me, his pierced ears glinting under the full might of the sun. I scan him from top to bottom. He wears a deeply purple jacket, immaculate hemwork on the sleeves. His long, model-esque legs and broad shoulders are perfectly proportioned. I would love to make clothes for a form like this. Like a mannequin. <laughs> the funny thing is that's stuff that I would sometimes think because <laughs> I did do fashion. I'm like, man, they have, like, it would just look, like, clothes just fall perfectly on certain people. Doing good, enjoying the story while making something to eat? What are you making to eat? You know I'm dozy and I'm hungry. And it's not all, and it's not all I notice. His eyes sparkle with a mysterious look that tells me he could charm a snake from its den. A stranger speaks. I should introduce myself. The name's Roman Price. Uh, I see. Nice to meet you then. My name is RF. Oh no. He just said he knew my name. Why did I reintroduce myself? <laughs> I try not to fluster further, but he winks at me. His posture relaxed. Welcome to House Price. How's your first hour been, little lady? So, <laughs> so his brother is like the edgy one. He's the stay out of my room one. And then Roman is like the really cool older brother. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing the dynamic. <laughs> You could charm me from my den, that's for sure. Chakara! Chakara always simping. I love it. Makes me think about when we, when I was playing Coral Island. <laughs> you were simping over everybody. But I mean, fair though. It was fair. <laughs> I smile tentatively. I'm an android, but I have my own bedroom, and I was purchased for no apparent purpose. In a word, strangely. Life has been treating me very strangely. That's because you're a special one. Why else would it be necessary to secure you on the black market? My eyes widen. B black market? Oh, you are on the black market? I look at him in shock. I'd assumed I was being sold at a normal auction online or something of that sort. Roman notes my expression seriously. What? Did you think a sentient android is easy to come by these days? Rogues aren't exactly filling the streets and living normal lives. I mean, you you, you did say that that was, that was something different about you, so that does make sense. Rogues? Oh no. I could hear my cat. <laughs> Hi, girly. Hi, baby. How are you doing? So, for any anybody who's new here, um, when my cat comes, her name is Rogue. Um, she tends to be a menace. Hey, somebody wants me to cuddle you, so um, that's what we're gonna do really quick you don't even want to be cuddled she doesn't want the cuddles today okay she said no okay she wants to be pet but not the cuddles um <laughs> making a mean pasta nice rogue you say literally it was just like 
it was the perfect timing. They said rogues and my cat is named Rogue. So I can't wait to play Coral Island again because everybody everyone's getting it with special interest on Theo, Pablo, Macy, and Nina because they're my day ones. <laughs> I've never heard the term before. Something Roman immediately picks up on as he knows the expression on my face. You know, androids that act against their programming, androids who don't always obey, and androids who can think and feel. Androids like you and, well, I'm sure you met the others. Oh, so they only get, like, sentient androids. I mean, hopefully it's for a good cause and that's not, like, weird. But I mean, I'd imagine it is since they're kind of just, like, employing them, it seems. Instead of, like, having them call them master and whatnot. I think for a moment. Like me? Yes, rogues like you. Not all rogues are self-aware, but the ones who are definitely qualified. Roman steps towards me slowly, before reaching out a single hand. I wince as he reaches for the top of my head, but to my surprise... He plops it right on top of my shoulder and pats me there lightly instead. You're special. Just like my brother. You're different from the people. Or in your case, androids around you. I can't lie, the way that they that he um went to put her his hand on her shoulder, it was framed almost like the um the hand from into the spider-verse. I thought that's what they were about to do. <laughs> that hand. <laughs> okay, girl, you good? You chilling? I need her to not. Yes, the. Hey, that one. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for it slightly. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles warmly. And that's not a bad thing. Roman clasps his hands together. In any case, I'm hoping you make a home here. You keep winking at me. I mean, that might as well be the same touch. <laughs> There's a quiet beeping sound. Roman checks his wrist, turning off the alarm. Sorry. I wish I could stay, Arev, but I gotta get going. I'll be checking in on you periodically. No, I think we were just refraining from head pats because don't touch Black Loop's hair. That is fair. That is, that is very fair. <laughs> like, I figure you weren't trying to do the Into the Spider-Verse one, but, like, I, I can't help but think of Into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> With that, he took... What you about to do? Sorry. I, I can feel my cat, um wagging her tail very, like, mischievously, like she's about to jump down and jump on my PC. Um, with that, he turns to leave, but I head after him. Determination in my steps. I see you. The Into the Spider-Verse ref is way better in my opinion. <laughs> I grab the edge of his jacket sleeve, stopping in his tracks. He lifts an eyebrow, his eyes curious. I want to ask him why there are so many androids here, and if they're all rogues, or, or, and if they're all rogues, so I do. Are we, are all the androids here rogues? I think you can discover the answer to that question yourself. I'm gonna say yeah. Relax, Arev. Find your space here, and you'll be happy. Whoa! Give a shout out! Hello! 
What are you doing? I still, I still always get ready to call you Harry, even though I also know that that's also not your actual name. <laughs> but welcome, welcome in Raiders. Thank you so much for bringing your community over and hanging out with us. For anybody who doesn't know who I am, I am Mono. I'm a variety streamer over here on Twitch. On Mondays, it is dedicated to indie games and very specifically to Rogue. Sorry, my cat is about to be a menace to me. Um, very specifically though, today we're checking out a special indie game because I got to, thank, thanks to Jellyfish Parade, I got to get the code to Bill Automata. Rogue, please don't jump on my PC. I got to get the code for Bill Automata before it comes out on March 3rd. So if you would like to check out this lovely visual novel, you can feel free to check it out on Steam. And if you would like to see their itch.io, you can also do it that way. And then Wednesdays we do art and Fridays is dedicated to whatever longer game I'm playing, which is still rising. Hold on, I have to get my, my cat off my PC. Down. No. No PC off, off the pillow so I can sit. Goodness. No, <laughs> you can't sit there. Oh, get down. <laughs> but welcome in, you guys. Also, by the way, I have to look at chat, but um, Harry, Astro, if you need to raid and run to get food, use the bathroom, have a screen break, any of that jazz, this goes for the raiders as well. If you need to step away, do feel free to. I 100% understand how it is to stream, but thank you so much for bringing your community over. I super duper appreciate you. It's so good to see you. Um, anybody who doesn't know, they are an awesome, awesome artist as well. And they also play games on their channel, so definitely go check them out. Now let me actually catch up on the, 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 the chat. Thank you, the song is actually by one of my friends, um, Pop No Tarts. Super duper awesome. I have a link to their um, channel in my panels because um i used their the song for my follower sound and my raid and it's great oh my god your lipstick color is so pretty thank you so much francis Fran um the, 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 i can't talk today francesco francisco i don't know why i can't talk now it's because my cat keeps jumping on my pc sorry down no you are giving yourself electric shocks. Stop it. No. Down. No. Get down. <sighs> yeah. I, I warned you guys this is what happens. Um, once she comes up the steps. 24 hour rogue stream win. Listen, that 24 hour rogue stream would not go well because she would just go nap. Anyway, I do need to raid and run, but I don't wanna. Listen, I understand, so definitely feel free if you need to, but if you do wanna sit and chill, it's gonna. Rogue. No, no, baby, no. Sorry, y'all gonna see my pajama bottoms. No, go here. No, you can't get on my PC. Goodness, maybe you're why my back hurts. Goodness gracious. I have like this random back pain that I've been warning you guys about today and I cannot get it out. It's like I need to get my back cracked. <laughs> <laughs> for it to come out because every time I stretch it doesn't do anything um wait, wait. Oh, goodness okay we're gonna we're gonna try to continue yes my cat wants attention my cat she she doesn't like when I stream the second I start talking to the PC she just she's just live it she must she was napping before so she didn't know but the second she she wakes up she realizes I'm talking to my computer She's pissed. 
Because how dare I give my PC attention and not her? And she gets mad and she jumps on my PC. She tries to get on the desk and like sit in front of my monitor so that I can't see. Or if I'm drawing, she sits in front of my like drawing tablet so that I can't draw. She does, she does that a lot. That's my baby, my brat. Okay, anyways. <laughs> We're gonna get back into the story. <laughs> Roman offers a hand for B to to shake. I've never shaken a human's hand before, but it feels very, I don't know, real. Rogue. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know better. You know better jumped off with the swiftness <laughs> don't get on the pc no problem sam i promise i reach for it okay i reach for it this time without the hesitation i felt when i'd ripped apart my proof of ownership this time I'm determined to embrace being free. Roman leaves me alone with that thought. Find my space here, huh? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is make myself useful. Maybe I can ask for help from someone I met before. Speak with Victor about my new employer, the Nightmare Prince route. Cool. Unsurprising. Unsurprisingly, Victor is still cleaning when I return. I don't want to interrupt him, yet I need answers, and asking him seems to be the best way to get some. What are you what are you doing down there? You are I'm sorry, she's like getting herself caught in the cords. Rogue! My cat's gonna get herself electrocuted. It's true he doesn't seem to be the most forthcoming when it comes to giving information, but... To my surprise, Victor glances at me, turning off the vacuum to look at me seriously before I've even the chance to speak. Yes? <laughs> I didn't say anything. Not with your mouth, no. But the way you're staring must mean you have something to say. As much as I want to deny it, he's perfectly right. I hedge for a moment. Well, since I have your attention, why doesn't your master, my employer, ever leave his room? Victor's response is automatic. That, Alref, is a private matter, the details of which are none of your concern. Ooh, okay. He pauses. At least, not at this moment. I open my mouth. Goodness, that vacuum, man. I open my mouth to ask another question, but Victor has already turned the vacuum back on. Rude. But I mean, they, they are just doing their job, I guess. Wait. He shuts up the vacuum again, bringing his cool gaze back towards me. Yes, Aurev? Victor is so done with me, probably. <laughs> when will you find out why your master purchased me? What do you mean? I look at him steadily. You said that you weren't certain why the Nightmare Prince chose to purchase me when you don't have a loom. I want to know when you'll be certain. Victor looks at me for a moment. His expression light lightening blah, blah, lighting with respect before he turns away dismissively. Rogue, what are you doing behind there? Hold on one second, you guys. Rogue. Out from behind the desk. Out. Come on. Out. Back up. Or like, like inside of the courts, behind everything. Goodness. 
She moved over though, so at least now she's not like caught in it. She had me worried for a second. If you had not noticed, I am working quite hard. The implication is clear. He's too busy to help me. Or so he thinks. If the information pertains to my future, I should think I ought to be privy. I lift an eyebrow in earnest. Besides, if you do want help cleaning, you can just say that instead of acting as though I'm prying. <laughs> I believe wanting help is not quite the same as wanting work to get done. I blink at him. The metallic click, quietly audible as my lids touch. What an interesting android. I smile, unsure if I am more amused by his cool demeanor or more frustrated. I keep both emotions inside. Somehow, I have the feeling that if he saw me laugh, he'd become huffy. <laughs> but other androids don't get huffy, do they? I watch him clean and I can't help but wonder if he and the others are like me. Different. Feeling. A rogue. Thankfully, Victor does not notice me staring. I think to look away, but there's still much I want to ask, much I want to say. My brows draw closer, determination on my lips. I'm an android. I was built to be industrious. I'll do what I know I can. I'll do as he asks. I'll do what I know I can. Because, like, you were not built for cleaning, so, like... Why, what, yeah, you're not gonna do that. I don't mind helping you, but I think I could be more helpful if I told you my skill set. Yeah. Victor nods slowly. Sensible. As a Dreamweaver model, I suppose I can guess, but please, do tell. Weaving, sewing, threading, knitting, and other sorts of crafts and creations. He nods slowly. As I thought, but clearly failed to consider. In that case, may I ask you to repair these garments and deliver them to the prince? And don't you dare go in. His eyes glare at me. <laughs> I nod eagerly anyway, taking the warning in stride. I task to take my mind off of this strange situation would be most helpful. I incline my head towards him, clasping my hands together. As you wish. But first, I must deliver you some information that I find most prudent. Namely, how things go in this house. I'm ready. As a free android, I cannot make you do anything. But know this, I have raised the prince since he were a boy. If you ever endanger him, you will be dismissed at the very least. And at the very worst, much worse. What are you gonna do, disassemble me? Is that a full-blown threat? I mean, it probably is. Basically his daddy at this point. Is that understood? I nod slowly. Victor stares at me. Good. Now, follow me. He leads me down a dark hallway that I'd already visited in my earlier tour of the house. This is your room. I stare at the space, wide-eyed. My room? So he wasn't kidding earlier. I don't believe I misspoke. The Nightmare Prince was quite clear that you ought to receive your own space as soon as you arrived. Here, you can power down for the night if you so wish. I... I don't know what to say. You got your own room for once. Appreciation of any kind would suffice. Why is your master so kind to androids? To my surprise, Victor considers silently for a long moment. Finally, he lifts his shoulders in reply, so I prompt him lightly. I want answers, and it's clear that Victor holds at least some of them. Is it perhaps because the prince was raised by one? That is a question that only the Nightmare Prince himself could answer. I'll be sure to ask him. Victor opens his mouth, looking annoyed at the possibility of my interacting directly with the prince, but I quickly speak to distract him before he can predictably warn me to stay away. Do you have a room as well? He dodges my question. 
All who live here have their own rooms. So that's a yes. I choose not to power down, but I have one. Yes. Man, so you just stay on all times, 24-7? Ain't that bad for, like, your battery or whatever? But then again, I don't know how they, like, power themselves. Like, do they just, like, <laughs> they just, like, shove a charger into their neck <laughs> to, like, gain, regain the power for the day? Like, okay. Imagine that they, they, like, since he doesn't power down, he just kind of has, like, you know how we have, like, the portable charger? Like, the portable, um, like, power supply thing for, like, our phone? Imagine he just has, like, a portable one. He just shoves it in his neck and he just continues to vacuum the floor every day. And that's just how he, like, charges himself. Wild. I'll have to see it then. When will our little tour go there? Victor glares at me. Never. <laughs> I sigh. Must you be so predictable, Victor? Why don't you live a little? Do I look human to you? <laughs> I lightly touch the connective joint of my neck. You're not old enough to look like as much of an android as I do, so I'm going to say yes, you do look human to me. Victor looks annoyed, choosing not to reply. If that'll be all, it won't be. I have one last request. Yes? I'd like to thank your master. Is it possible for me to get a loom here? I'll speak with the prince. I nod. Thank you. As for my question, you said all who live here. Who else lives here? This may come as a surprise to you, but House Price is a sanctuary for androids such as yourself. I want to ask, but he's already naming all the mansion's residents. This is the Eastern Wing. Here resides your room as well as that of Zaffir and Diego. My room is in the Western Wing of the mansion, along with the Nightmare Prince. Zaffir and Diego? Are they like us? They are both androids, yes. I would not consider myself similar to them in any other way. <laughs> he's like, I ain't like them. I try to smother a smile, but it slips through, just barely. Oh yes, of course not. <laughs> My smile fades. Still, a house of androids. I'm certainly curious. The question's rolling into my mind faster than I have a chance to form them with my mouth. What are the other android- What the- What are the other androids like? And how do they end up here? Are they like me? Purchase like things, but allowed to live free? Can they think and feel? Will they, will they like me as a person? I want to ask, but Victor already seems to have made up his mind that he's ready to leave. I'll be taking my leave now, as I have many duties for the day and limited time. In the face of his determination, I don't have the heart to ask him anymore. Victor clicks his heels together, and with that, departs. As soon as I hear his footsteps disappear, I sit down on the bed. Immediately, I feel a signature tingle on my skin that tells me that my batteries are absorbing the energy emitted from the power station. A power station designed to look like a bed? Oh, that's cool. I don't know what kind of person my employer is, but it's as if my heart's been red. I'm not human. I never will be. And I am content. But there are feelings I possess deep inside that... I wish to know what it's like to be one of them, to think like them, to act like them. No matter how much I feel like I'm real, what am I but a combination of letters and numbers? As it does whenever I think too hard about my existence, my hands start to tingle with discomfort. I know it's more likely to be psychosomatic than a real illness, but even that knowledge doesn't make it feel any less real. Do you know my secret, Nightmare Prince? I wonder how he could have. It's not as if my former master's family ever acknowledged that I could feel, at least not to my face. I shake my head. I don't feel the need to power down anyway, so I might as well get to task. What's the first thing I'd like to do? I feel at a loss, so I make a search of the internet to see what I can find. How to make a fresh start. Lists pop into my head, into my mind, so I choose the top most researched answer. 
10 Tips for Making a Fresh Start I skim the list until one of the tips jumps out at me. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent myself? But how? I can't change my clothes and I don't want to change my outer shell. I touch my hair lightly. But I can change this. I touch my hair and seek out a mirror. There's one in the corner of the room, so I move over to that side of the room and get to work. More than a few hours later, I look in the mirror to see my handiwork. Let's see what your hair looks like. That's certainly different, isn't it? Luntz would hardly recognize me if he saw me like, like this now, but the days where I sought approval from my master are over. I have to look to the future. I wonder what my new master, employer, looks like. Well, no time like the present to find out. Shaking my freshly done hair, I make for the door. I knock lightly, but to my mild surprise, there's no su reply. See, you can't even follow directions. It's oh, It hasn't even been a full day yet that you have gotten into this house and you have already decided to not listen <laughs> to the, the tasks that you were supposed to do, aka do not bother the nightmare prince you already went over there had a whole conversation and now you're going right back there again after doing your hair wild i try again <sighs> Ooh, look at her hair. oh it's so cute i like it oh it's so i really like these character models for the characters so far. Oh my goodness, I love her hair. It's so cute. I know that he'll probably be less than happy with me, but I reach for the door handle. Look at you, not listening. And the moment I do. Why are you trying to open my door? Hey, weirdo. <laughs> oh, weirdo trying to go into somebody's door who told you not to. Because it's the only way to get your attention. I knocked politely a moment ago, didn't I? He didn't answer. That's that's an answer. The prince doesn't reply, but I don't mind. I'm the one with the questions unanswered. I have two questions for you. I pause for a moment. Three questions, actually, but... Are you sure you do not wish for me to call you by name? No one has called me by my name in a long time. Is that because you dislike it? It is. My former name was a human one, and I... I am not human. Not anymore. You like Cyborg? Not anymore? I want to ask what he means, but I'm too late. Ask your questions, please. What did you purchase me for? I... hate to see that which is valuable thrown away. I stare at the door. Thrown away? To be seen as valuable is touching, but thrown away? You mean my master's family? They were going to scrap me? Yes. Oh, so they were gonna scrap her. Well, that sucks. I'm not surprised, but somehow hearing him say it so bluntly hurts. I'm sorry. No, I, I suppose I should thank you. I turn away from the door, but his voice follows me down the hall. Didn't you have two questions? Not anymore. I can't find it in myself to reply. I shut the door behind me, only to hear the Nightmare Prince's voice floating quietly above me. Did I hurt you? I'm not sure if he can see me, but I shake my head. You just told me the truth. Was he have like a ring device throughout the entire house so that he could hear everybody? He murmurs quietly in reply. The truth hurts sometimes. It does. Still, I ignore his gentle words to ask a prudent question. How are you here? I'm always here. I haven't inhabited my own body since. He trails off, but I don't let him off so easily. Since? 
Not for a long time. You have an accident? I see. I touch my chest lightly. If I had a heart instead of a heart core, it would hurt. But instead, I feel a sadness that permeates my whole entire being. Alref, are you alright? I shake my head again. You know, it's funny that you haven't been in your body, as you say, in a long time. But I would do anything to have a human body right now. Oh? Why is that? If I had a human body, I could cry. I've read that it's a very useful thing to do when you're in pain. Are you in pain, then? I don't reply. Instead, I let out a little laugh, but it doesn't sound warm. I don't want it to. Can you see me? I cannot, no. Good. I'd like to be left alone, if that's alright. It's not every day you find out that the people whose livelihoods came from your hard work so easily cast you aside. I see. There's a pause. I think he's gone, when. I'm sorry. For what? For making you sad. That was not my intention. I wouldn't have told you if I'd known you'd be sad. I... I mean, you got a rogue robot that got feelings and whatnot. What, you thought she wasn't going to be sad? And you told her she was going to be scrap metal? <laughs> like, it's kind of rough. <laughs> he trails off again before letting out a quiet sigh. I know what it's like to feel thrown away. To be thrown away. Question his judgment, accept his comforting words. Eh. I'm gonna accept his words. If anything, the earnestness of the prince makes me smile, all bit sadly. You're sweet for a nightmare prince. What do you mean? Well, you don't seem like a nightmare at all. To be concerned about an android, it is all too kind of you. Then... The voice trails off in what I can only assume is uncertainty. Would it comfort you to call me by name? Ooh, we all get to know your name? I think for a long moment. It would be nice to know, but... In all honesty? Only in honesty. I shake my head. It would comfort me if you revealed your name out of kindness and not obligation. I see. And with that, his voice does not come again. I sit down heavily on the bed. Perhaps I will charge up and rest after all. Yeah, you had a, you had a long day. <laughs> a cheery music for the next day. <laughs> the next morning is not quite a pleasant one. I spend most of it trying to organize my thoughts, but I do try my best not to, wa to wallow. I find myself standing in the living room listlessly. Honestly though, I'm already tired of feeling bad about myself. I mean, yes, I could have been scrapped by my master's family, but the truth is, I wasn't. I wasn't scrapped. Like clockwork though, the bitter thought returns. I wasn't, but I could have been. Ugh, I can't keep thinking about this. Slapping my cheeks lightly, the sound attracts Victor's attention, distracting him from his busy cleaning. Is there a reason you've hit yourself? <laughs> and more importantly, do I want to know it? <laughs> I avoid his gaze sheepish bleh, sheepishly. My former master, he used to. I trail off, but Victor looks at me expectantly, lowering the duster in his hand. He did that too. Why? What purpose would hurting yourself be for? I lift my shoulder slowly. I asked him that too once. He said it was to pump himself up. Oh, he's, he was just mimicking her master. Victor stares at me in puzzlement. You know, charge him up. Give him a power boost. I see. Did it work then? Do you feel energized? I consider for a moment. A little, actually. Interesting. Again, I find myself wondering if Victor is sapient like I am. Oh my goodness, I wish I don't 
I doubt it will happen, but I wish that like there'd be a random little scene of us walking in on Victor and he's just like pumping himself up, hitting his cheeks. <laughs> that would be funny. Instead of asking, I begin to clear my throat, only to stop before Victor questions yet again, yet another bizarre human behavioral trait that I've picked up. Anyway, um, is something happening today? As if he suddenly remembers that he was in the middle of a task, he holds up a duster. Ah, yes. The master's brother will be visiting. The house is clean, but it could always be cleaner. <laughs> I see. I try my best to help Victor tidy up, but the most I can manage is attempting to mop the floor. A task Victor quickly takes over when he discovers that I hadn't swept first. <laughs> It's just like moving the wet, dirty water all over the floor. <laughs> all the big pieces of dirt just moving all over the place. If I hadn't seen it myself, I would not believe how hopeless you are at cleaning. <laughs> well, she, she was made to just make the clothes. It wasn't made to clean the stuff. Please, if you would step aside. Busy yourself. I look at him, perplexed. Doing what? Anything but cleaning. That's what he wants to say. Something you're good at. Anything. <laughs> Anything but this. Anything? Anything that involves you stepping away from the mop. <laughs> I think for a moment, an idea gradually forming in my mind. Maybe instead of dwelling on the fact that I was almost in pieces, I could find something that only I could do, as I said. Do you have something for me to draw on? Victor nods, looking first and foremost relieved. I'll retrieve a tablet and hollow pen right away. He quickly disappears, leaving me alone in the living room. I wonder for a moment if the Nightmare Prince is with us, observing somehow or listening in. Prince, are you listening in? Did someone call me? Egg, all you gotta do is whisper he's worse than a ring. I don't know if I'd want to be in a house where, like, literally, like, any little, any little thing I'm doing. Nightmare Prince just in there just watching the video camera. <laughs> just listening to every single room. <laughs> Listen to every single conversation that people have. I did. Are you always listening to us? No. I was going to say something, but you two seemed occupied. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't believe that. I think, I think he listens to everybody. I think he does. Well, maybe saying excuse me would help you to be included if that's what you really wanted. Oh. Right. Yep. How long have you been listening, anyway? He prudently says nothing as Victor returns with a tablet and hollow pen. For you, Arif. If you'd like to go out into the garden, that would be most helpful. I grin at him. Strangely, Victor's consistent distaste for me being in his way cheers me up, as if this one thing will stay the same no matter what happens here. If I didn't know better, I think you were trying to get rid of me, Victor. His reply is dry. I am, that I may clean in peace. If you would, please go to the garden. <laughs> I salute him playfully, taking the notepad and pen. With that, I leave him to it. The garden is beautiful. I saw it before, but this time I'm not feeling nervous. I can see that the roses are immaculately cared for, no doubt by the butler android. What can't you do, Victor? I walk with my arms behind my back, the writing utensils still tightly gripped in my hands. My expression falters for a moment. I'll bet the Nightmare Prince would never think of throwing you away. I take a seat on a small garden table, emptying my hands before slapping my cheeks lightly with both palms. It didn't work the first time, and I doubt it'll work the second, but I do it anyway. Don't you start sulking now, Arev. I look up, squinting into the sun. It doesn't hurt my eyes, but it's a reflex anyway, perhaps because I saw my master do it so often. I rarely went out to run errands, so being out in the exposed air without a purpose feels strange. I wind my arms, then stretch my joints. When I sit down, I turn on the tablet, 
anticipation building in my chest as I stare down at the blank canvas. I may not be able to clean, but there's things that only I can do, right? Maybe if I make myself someone of value, I won't be abandoned again. Oh, but you were of value. They just didn't see the value in you. Family, that is. But then I hear it. The Nightmare of Prince's voice in my head. I know what it's like to feel thrown away. To be thrown away. But then, I don't think he's the type. I start to sketch an idea. If I can get a loom here as I requested of Victor, I would love to weave a silk tapestry for the Nightmare Prince. To thank him for viewing me as someone of value. For not wanting me to be thrown away. As so many times before, I sketch lightly the colors of the tapestry. I want to convey something warm and touching. I wonder what his favorite color is. As I map out my tapestry, I color block the patterns. Golden splashes cross the screen as I work silently. I hope he likes it. As I work, I find myself lost in the breeze. The only sounds the melody of leaves brushing against other leaves and my pencil scratching against paper. The sun is on my skin and my mind wanders just a little. I wonder who let him down like that. As much as I hate to admit it, most androids who hadn't awakened like I had are possessions. But humans, humans are different. The prince, who apologized to an android so easily, is different. How could someone throw a person like that away? And more than that, who would do such a thing? I sketch in silence as I contemplate, my hands tracing out the shape of the rose garden instead. Behind me, the sound of a door sliding open makes me turn. Oh. Oh, who are you? I look up from the pad on my on the table, my mouth parted in mild surprise. It's another android. I stand quickly, suddenly feeling shy. Oh, um, hello? Oh, you must be Orev. Roman told me about you. Yes, I am. You're a pretty tiny thing, aren't you? Actually, yeah, you are kind of tiny. Everybody's very tall compared to you. I have the sudden urge to pat you on the head and give you a bit of candy if you're good. No, don't don't treat me like a child though. That 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 feels personal because I am also short. <laughs> that that's like as bad as like when somebody sits and stands next to you when you're short and they want to put their elbow on you. Like, get away from me, you tree! <laughs> don't, don't don't put me don't put your elbow on top of my head just because I'm tiny. <laughs> oh, is it your favorite one? Do I have amnesia from the intro? Was he there? I think he was. Were they? Um, I just don't remember their name yet. <laughs> also, I want to make sure I'm saying your name right. Is it Agia? Because I want to I want to make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, maybe, maybe it's close. We'll see. He laughs brightly. <laughs> Diego. I'm Diego. Nice to meet you. There we go. Agea. Okay. Agea. Cool. I wanted to make sure I was, I was saying it right. Because I didn't want to get wrong. <laughs> Diego. Oh, thank nice you. Nice to meet you too. The android in front of me seems bright and cheerful, a huge contrast to Victor or, well, any android I've ever met. I didn't know other androids could be so warm. So how did you end up here? It's a long, boring story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Go Diego, go Diego, go Diego! <laughs> Oh, my cat's on the bed. I was wondering where she went. I nod once. I used to take care of children. Oh, that makes sense. That's probably why they have such a cheery personality. Because they're like a, a, a caregiver. Oh, what was that like? 
Diego is thoughtful. Hmm? What was caring for children like? Well, lots of vomit, human waste, and <laughs> crying. <laughs> Babies and toddlers can be a nightmare if, of course, you're not manufactured to have the patience of a saint. That is true. I am not. <laughs> he grins. Luckily you are, I'm guessing. Exactly. <laughs> I smile tentatively, starting to feel a little less uncomfortable with the other android. Wow, that didn't seem like a long story at all. Oh, I'm not finished. It all started when I malfunctioned during a fire in the school I was manufactured for. Oh. There I was, in the midst of burning walls, when... when... There's a sharp mechanical sound that sounds, with no other way to put it, wrong. I watch as, the, as Diego's eyes flash brightly before he freezes in place, his eyelids clamping shut. I reach out in alarm. Diego, are you all right? Diego! Oh, did Diego malfunction again? System rebooting. Please stand by. Oh, does... Is this like a trauma response for Diego every time they remember, like... Like, malfunctioning? They accidentally, like, fry their system or something and reboot? I wait anxiously for a moment, trying to decide if I should run inside and get Victor for help. Just as I decide to leave, Diego's eyelids flutter open. Oh, Aurev. Sorry, was I saying something? Ooh, yeah, that was a trauma response, baby. I'm, ooh. Baby cakes. That was, that was traumatic for you. I'm sorry. Yes, you were mid-sentence and you shut down. You were in a fire and you, you are about to make them reboot again. Don't, don't mention the fire. A rev? Goodness. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Um, some of my memories have been corrupted, so I do that from time to time. We're working on getting those issues all banged out without replacing my memory circuit altogether since, you know. Oh, that- Oh, I'm scared for Diego. That- <laughs> The fact that their memory of that fire and their malfunction is so corrupted, it makes me wonder. What happened when they malfunctioned in that fire? <laughs> you know, like what? Diego, honey, you 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 okay? I hope you're okay. Then I wouldn't be me anymore. I see. At least that answers my question as to whether anyone else is like me. So you're a rogue too. You were a caretaker android before, you said. Right, she's so pretty. Isn't her hair so cute? Like, she changed it, um, after the first day. It's so cute. He taps his head lightly, seeming embarrassed. Uh, sorry that I can't tell you more about myself. Hopefully I'll be able to recall more once we get this all banged out. I don't know if you want to recall more. I don't think you should. I feel like you should just start over. Live, live your life. Diego, don't don't worry about your past. Thank you for the hydrate and the stretch. I'll do that real quick. Uh, <laughs> Stretching. Okay. In any case. Welcome to the mansion. I'm Diego. Not sure if I told you that before. You did, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't have the heart to tell him that he did, so I just smile. Yeah, we're not gonna... We're not gonna tell him that we already know. It's okay. Nice meeting you again, I'm sure. Let me ask you, what are your first impressions of our mysterious benefactor? I tilt my head curiously. You don't know anything about the Nightmare Prince, either? Diego shakes his head, his curls swaying with the motion. Mm, not a thing. Even though, like, technically it's, like, behind the, the text box, I really like the way that the elbows are. Like, the design of, like, the, an the android parts. It's very nice. Well, for one thing, I can say he's welcoming, 
He's a little strange. I'm gonna say he's a little strange. He is a little strange. <laughs> that seems more fair. Is he necessarily welcoming? No. Not necessarily welcoming. Um, he's nice enough. But he's not welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> Diego lets out a laugh. What? Strange doesn't begin to cover the Nightmare Prince, if you ask me. Still, why do you think he's strange? He apologized to me too. It's strange, but he treats me like... like I'm a person. I look down shyly. I am a person, but the fact is that he actually treats me like one. Diego grins at me. <laughs> you don't have to say anymore. I get it because, you know, same. I like Diego. Diego's a nice change of pace. He's actually happy. <laughs> Diego looks down at my digital drawing pad in interest. What are you doing? Finger painting? I look at him incredulously, flipping the canvas towards him. He observes it for a moment. I mean, to be fair, he was a caretaker. Or they were a caretaker. So, like, they might not know anything about actual regular painting aside from finger painting. Because all they did was deal with kids. <laughs> That's a lovely finger painting, RF. Good job. <laughs> they even still talk like they're like a, a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> All cute. It's not finger painting. They're designs for a tapestry. Can't you tell? Like, nope. <laughs> Diego shrugs. Mm, I wasn't programmed to understand art, just to rate it. I can say for a certainty that your finger painting is top class. If I were still in my classroom, I'd certainly post it on the wall. Aww. It is kind of cool, though, to see, like, how even with them being rogues, their programming very much does have an effect on, like, how they can experience their, like, life. Because, like, Arev cannot clean for nothing, but she can make some beautiful paintings and, like, tapestries and can sew up a storm and like Diego is super nice but at the end of the day they're still really function just to be able to cater to like a kindergarten class so whatever skill level of kindergartners that's kind of what they're programmed to do which is so interesting because it's like in a way they can they can like rate art but they can't understand art but they can like rate it enough to know that that art is really good but they can't he can't, like, fully grasp it, which is so interesting. I... you... I don't know what to say for a long moment. I don't have the heart to explain my drawings, so I settle with a generic reply. Thanks, I guess. You're welcome. In fact, I have something for you. Oh? My interest peaked. I watch as he digs in his pocket. Mm, here we go. He produces a small gold star sticker, placing it gently on the back of my hand. <laughs> the fact that he just has like a pack of gold star stickers in like their back pocket. That's such a kindergarten teacher thing to do. I love it. That's so cute. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> I hope they have like A plus stickers too. Just like just like the full just a full pack of like the folded stickers that every teacher got with every type every type of sticker <laughs> that you would need. An apple, a star, A plus check mark <laughs> heart. <laughs> everything oh man that's so good that was a peak moment of my narrative design career <laughs> listen it was great i love it i love it i could just see i could just see diego every time anybody does anything good in their respective field he's just like good job and just like puts a sticker on their forehead 
Like, imagine Victor's face. <laughs> like, he cleans, he mops the floor really, really good. And Diego's just like, good job. And walks away. <laughs> Sorry, I can see it in my head. This is why I'm laughing so much. Victor would be so annoying. What? <laughs> I can see it. Oh man, just like him. Victor just dusting very angrily. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, that's so good. Love it. Oh my goodness, welcome in, Owl. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're having a fantastic time as we play. We just finished um, seeing Diego give um, a rev a gold star. <laughs> it was great. But welcome in. I hope you're having a fantastic day. For anybody who doesn't know, Owl is another of the devs of Jellyfish Parade. Um, just like I was saying earlier when Agea came in, if you would like to check out their itch.io feel free so you can know more about jellyfish parade and if you would like to check out the game yourself because it does come out march 3rd feel free to check out their steam page so but welcome welcome in <laughs> victor would be like please refrain from adding stickers to my person <laughs> oh man that's fantastic that's so good. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, then thank you so much for the follow. I super appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. He doesn't seem to notice my confusion at all. Instead, giving me a megawatt smile. Oh, I love Diego. Diego's my favorite at the moment. Diego and Roman. I like, I like those two. <laughs> Favorite color is pink. Awesome. Mine is actually blue. Blue and purple. Those are my favorites. I mean, hence why my, my water bottle's blue. I wear a lot of black, though. Everybody thinks this, that black would be my favorite color, but it's not. I just like to wear it. <laughs> You're certainly welcome. On that note, I'll get out of your hair. I just wanted to say hello. Oh, well, I don't have much to do, so you might find me here more often than not. It's not like I have a directive anymore. Diego nods in earnest. I hope you find yourself a purpose soon. He turns to leave, but I stop him, calling out awkwardly. Hey, Diego. Hmm? What's your purpose? Instead of replying, Diego puts his fingers to his lips. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> and with that, I'm left alone in the garden with my sketches. I like Diego. Diego's good. <laughs> it's the middle of the night when something, I don't know what, rustles me out of sleep mode. I'm almost fully charged, so there's no point in going back in back to sleep mode. Maybe I can brainstorm out a purpose for myself. I try to think. If I was with my master, he'd tell me. I try to imagine what he would say. He'd tell me to work my hardest and do my best. But what's my best? I look down at my hands. These fingers were made for weaving. I'm not sure I'm equipped to do much else. But I want to be. I try to think of my skill set. What am I good at? Aside from asking questions. <laughs> I lie down and stare at the ceiling. Doing a quick online search, I try to find job suggestions. Those with an inquisitive nature would be excellent journalists. Journalism? Maybe I could work from home and trick them into hiring me. I mean, you could always just do all of the art for the entire house. I mean, you could be like the, the, the old timey people back in the day where they just hired artists that just adopted them. That would be my dream. Let a rich person decide to adopt me and let me live inside their house and not have to pay any bill for the rest of my life. I'd be on it. I would paint whatever you want. <laughs> Diego is a cutie. His route is all recorded. Just needs to be edited and programmed. Oh, awesome! I'm so excited to see all the different routes. Ironically, she does become an artist in Diego's... Really? 
That's so cool. That's very cool. I groan aloud. There's no way I could do a human job. And besides that... Victor called the nightmare prince my employer. <laughs> Certainly that means I'll have a job waiting for me. I just need it to be... explained to me. Or something. Shutting my eyes, I consider. If anything, as uncertain as this is, it's almost thrilling. I've never not known what my future would look like. Not for the past decade since I was first activated, and now... Now all of that is different. Now my life is different. There's a part of me that loves it, that feels exhilarated by the idea of feeling new emotions, but it is not as big as that part of me that wonders about my new life and the questions that I know will haunt me for time to come. Who really is the Nightmare Prince? Why does he conceal himself? And most importantly, what does he want with me? He said I was someone valuable without a purpose. I don't feel very valuable right now, though. I try not to worry, but I end up opening my eyes again and staring at the ceiling. But I do feel valued. That's good. I shut my eyes and roll on my side. I'll have to repay him as soon as I can. I think of my sketches. I'll do it the best way I know how. By creating a tapestry, the one thing I was built to do was a dream reap the dream weaver model android i'll prove that i deserve to be here i'm sure of it it's another day where i'm not sure what to do with myself somehow each day goes by slower than the last as i think of what diego said i hope you find yourself a purpose soon does every rogue here have a purpose am i the only one Floundering? I mean, but to, to be fair, girl, you literally just got there. Like, this is this is quite literally your third day. <laughs> like, you got you gotta be a little nicer to yourself. Like you, you it's it's okay to not know what you're doing. <laughs> I wanna ask Diego or Victor, but both both seem so settled in their own ways. I can't imagine Diego's easygoing approach to roadship or Victor's if he is a rogue, strict adherence to rules working for me. I let out a sigh, a habit picking up from my old master. I don't need air, but it cools down my engines anyway. I'm outside sweeping, the only chore Victor will allow me to do when I see an approaching figure. Roman? I wonder what brings him here. It's only been a few days, but he seems just a little tired. He brightens at the sight of me, which is perfect because I have some questions for him. Roman, welcome. I'm glad to see you. Roman in this wink, like this, this constant winky face. <laughs> oh, and why is that, little lady? Just like, just a constant flirt. This is this all. This, that's just what Roman is. I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> I've been talking to the other androids here, and. Well, I've just been wondering about whether or not you have a purpose for me. Wow, you sure don't beat around the bush. I stop in my tracks, leaning the broom against the wall. Oh, sorry. I, I've been thinking about it a lot. Roman is my boy. <laughs> I love that now I know both of you guys as boys. I know that you are now Roman and Agea is Diego. Now I know. I know, at least so far. <laughs> no, you're fine. I like a girl with Moxie. In any case, I guess I should be straightforward with you too. He moves to sit in the middle of the path leading to the house, his feet dangling above the water. He passed the spot beside him. I sit slowly, giving the water a weary look. I do, in fact, have a purpose for you. Oh? Well? I look at him in interest. You know, you're the first Andrew that my brother has ever chosen, and he saved you from being scrapped at that. As a result, you owe him, in a sense. I mean, I didn't... I... I mean, this is this is me talking. I don't owe him nothing. I didn't know that I was getting scrapped. 
he he could have let me get scrapped. I don't owe him. He just he did it to be kind. All the others, <laughs> Victor, Diego, I'm the one who fixed them up, got them running again. But you, you're special. I'm sure my brother wanted to save you for some reason, so I decided to move forward with my plan. I'm not sure I follow his reasoning, but I stay silent, waiting for more. <laughs> They're all my faves. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I always say my favorite route is the one I'm working on. Currently, that's Klaus. <laughs> that's fair. I feel the same way with my own characters. It's like every one of them I'll talk about. I'm like, yep, they're my favorite, but like, they're they're all my favorite at the end of the day. <laughs> my brother hasn't left his room in over a decade. Not since. The accident. He pauses. Just like his brother once had when we spoke briefly. Not in a long time. That's what he said, too. Because he got turned into cyborg. That's what I'm convinced. I believe he chose you because he wanted a friend. So, I want you to befriend him. Really? So I, I gotta be forced to befriend this, this, this person? Really? I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> what? He doesn't repeat himself, so I ask a different question. Why me? Isn't Victor's companionship enough? I mean, Victor's like a dad in a way, I'm assuming. Instead of replying, Roman looks at me dryly. Okay, point taken. <laughs> but how is my friendship supposed to help him? Let's just say I have a hunch. I'll be checking in periodically to see how you're doing. Just ensure there's progress. Better become besties with him. That's that's what Roman said. You, you better become best friends with my brother. That's what we hired you for. That's your job. Be friends with him. I don't care if he's edgy. Do it. <laughs> progress? I'm not sure what he's talking about, but he doesn't give me space to ask either. Instead, he relaxes. His eyes only showing a dizzying, snake-like charm as he crosses his arms. Anyway, what you got there? The, the, the switch up, though. He points at a small notebook tucked in my pocket. Oh, this is just... I wanted to thank the Nightmare Prince for rescuing me. It's just some tapestry ideas. To be honest, I don't even know how I'm going to weave when it's just me, but... I trail off, even as Roman stares at me expectantly. His focus is so tightly concentrated on me that I almost feel shy, if only because I've never been in a situation where what I was feeling felt, felt, listened to. Like what I'm saying right now makes me the most interesting, most important person in the world. Come with me. What? I told Victor to put you up in the eastern wing of the estate because I wasn't sure how much space you would need, and I'm glad I did. There's plenty of room in that section to get you set up. He turns and starts to walk away, beckon beckoning for me to follow. Roman leads me back down the hall that has my bedroom. Looking around the room with interest, he nods to himself then looks at me with a smile. Perfect. Perfect? Perfect for what? For a loom and whatever else you need. I'll give you whatever you need as long as you can tell me what's necessary for you to thrive here. I feel myself beginning to fluster shuffling from foot to foot anxiously. I know I asked for a loom, but his phrasing, whatever you need, it makes me feel strange to imagine being given my own workshop. Roman watches me again with that same intense interest, his sharp gaze taking in every detail. He mutters to himself, Still, I do want you to have your own space. What you gonna give me a wing of the house? <laughs> Scrap that. Rather than squeezing it all in here, I'll have one of the guest rooms converted into a workshop. We'll get you set up right away. Right away? He snaps, the sound echoing crisply in the almost empty room. Like lightning. He smiles charmingly, then presses a button on a wall intercom. Victor, report to the potential workshop quarters. Before I know it, Victor is in the doorway behind me. You called? Would you mind giving a supply list to Victor? List everything you need to be comfortable, and he'll take care of it. You're probably cursing under breath. <laughs> it's like, you only been here for three days. I'm already having to build a workshop for you. 
<laughs> Roman turns, presumably to leave, but I stop him, reaching out with a single hand. Wait, you want me to work for you? Because I am only one android, I don't think I could fill as many orders as I could before. Ah, uh, I think you misunderstand me. The weaving things are for your pleasure, not for your work. I'm going off the assumption that you like your work, yes? I do, but... but why? Why what? Why are you being so generous to an android? I told you already, didn't I? I'm doing this for my younger brother. It's in his direct interest for me to provide you with everything you need to be comfortable. Now, oh, I forgot. I didn't fix the other, the timer. I was like, wait, I thought I fixed that already. I fixed the command, not the timer. My bad. I was like, why is there still like a second link? I thought I deleted that. Okay, now it'll actually be correct the next time. <laughs> Goodness, this is what happens when you like have too many commands and you try to fix old ones for new ones. All right. Sorry for any confusion. It is not on Switch. <laughs> it is the Steam link. It's just I forgot to change to update the um the timer when I realized the mistake with the command. So I fixed the command when we first first started. Um I was so confused. <laughs> I looked at chat. My gaze drops. Oh, I guess that makes sense. But also I look up. Also? You have a new life now. Not many people get the chance to start over. Don't waste it. He smiles in that disarmingly charming way and departs from the room, leaving me alone with Victor. <sighs> I say nothing for a moment, considering. To my surprise, Victor turns to me. What are you thinking about? <laughs> How strange the humans of this household are. Doesn't this feel out of the ordinary to you? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Victor Victor kills me. I was about to say Mono got us a switch for it. <laughs> if only, right? If only. <laughs> but that's my bad. So it happens when you're doing too many things at once sometimes. <laughs> I smile awkwardly. Oh, you must think me silly. I do not think you silly. I have worked for this family for two decades. I guess in many ways I am used to their human oddities. Perhaps you just need time to adjust. He said, don't you talk about my family like that. I basically raised them. That's, ba that's what he said. The words are kind. I look up at Victor, but his kindness isn't reflected in the same cool expression. It doesn't matter to me, though. I know kindness when I see it. Are you ready to send the supply list over then? I smile, warmth washing over me pleasantly as I think of Roman's generosity as well. I am, yes. And I hold out my hand. Oh, look at your little room! I mutter under my breath as I stand in the doorway. Wow, you really did mean right away. What, was this in the same day? Roman is long gone, but as Victor stands beside me making sure everything is in order, I stand in the doorway in disbelief. I can't believe that Roman kept his promise so quickly. Hardly a week has gone by, and I already have a tapestry room full, complete with a loom, fabric, even a classic era sewing machine. That's awesome! This is like... every seamstress's, like... dream. I wish my room back there looked like that. Roman. I'll have to thank him the next time he comes to visit. You're gonna be making a lot of tapestries, girl. In the meantime, Diego appears, dragging another android in tow. I hear them before I see them. I am not meant for physical labor. Please unhand me, you villain. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't expecting that line. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Unhand me, you fiend. <laughs> What's that expecting? 
<laughs> oh, I love him already. Yeah, yeah. Now come <laughs> on and meet Arif. <laughs> that unhinged me, right? I'm gonna start saying that to people literally. Oh my goodness. That's like, um, oh my goodness, what was the line? There was like all of these like, um, like Victorian like phrases going around and one of them was that was um I got the case of the morbs <laughs> and I'm like I gotta start using that because that cause like facts <laughs> such a good line <laughs> oh man oh oh hello there I want they they had to work in theater I'm I'm convinced they had to have like been programmed for theater. Don't tell me though, but I'm I'm convinced that they had to have worked in theater. He straightens, indignantly tugging his sleeve out of Diego's grip. <laughs> I'm Zaffer, as I'm sure you know. Oh, that that name fits you. I have never seen this Andrew in my life. <laughs> you don't know my name? You don't know me? I stare at him blankly. You know, Zaffer the pop, pop star, star. There we go. Winner of three Bammy Awards, Artist of the Year six times in a row. Doesn't ring a bell. Sorry, man. Guess you're not that well known. <laughs> I smile awkwardly. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Oh, it's great. Sorry. Zaffer looks flabbergasted, then crestfallen. It's... it's fine, of course. Oh, their hardcore is just, like, slowly not running. Their motor is just not running as, as fast anymore. They are, they are sad. <laughs> it's totally fine, Bluebird. Mm hmm Bluebird? Is that referring to me? I'm not sure, but I greet him anyway. My name is Ara. It's nice to meet you, Zaffar. Same here. May I ask you a question, though? I'm all ears. Why are you calling me Bluebird? I'm not blue at all. Zephyr thinks for a moment. Well, there's no such thing as a pink bird. Besides, it's adorable. Just like you. I mean, you could call her Flamingo. I mean, that's a pink bird. <laughs> Zephyr is devastated and just completely devastated the compliment rolls off my back mostly because i'm still pondering the nickname pink bird just makes more sense though you are you are very pink what do you prefer my sweet flamingo there we go flamingo that that fits better vetoed you are not calling me a flamingo <laughs> It's a pink bird, though. I mean, that's the only. That's I think your only option. A rev. I, th I think that's the only option you got. Diego places a hand on each of our shoulders. All right, all right, settle down, children. That's not chatting. He flexes an arm. Time to get to work. I've told you, a celebrity does not dirty his hands with menial labor. Victor pinches the bridge of his nose. Victor is so done. He is so fed up. And I, I'm living for it. <laughs> He's like, I am in a house full of children. <laughs> oh, man. Perhaps this is more trouble than it's worth. Diego, leave him. Would you please begin unpacking the loom? It's quite large and... Say no more. You can count on me. Excellent. I stand there as the two androids bustle about, Zaffer watching at my side. So, um, what sort of celebrity are you? I'm so glad you asked, Bluebird. I am a musician, composer, director, and actor extraordinaire. <laughs> I see. I'd love to hear some of your music. But I'll have to finish this first, if you don't mind. Excuse me. Zaffir's expression brightens, then seems torn as I start to help unpack. I guess I should help too, shouldn't I? He is so disappointed. 
you must see. <laughs> Zephyr's VA really listen, honestly, I'm like really enjoying all of the, the voice actors. Like all the voices are really good so far. I reach for the nearest box and move to place the threads into a draw. You don't have to. After all, if he's a rogue, it's not like we could make him. Maybe that's what Victor was getting at earlier. I can't resist the honored request of a lady. And I want you to hear my music. He's like, if I clean, then you know, you might listen to my music and that's the one I want. <laughs> I laugh at Zephyr's shameless admissions and get to work. <laughs> oh, I love Zephyr now. I love them. Like, they're all so good. I don't know who I love. Zephyr hates movement in general. <laughs> the work split between the four of us. The room is quickly set up. We're almost done when I approach the organizing android slowly, reaching out to get his attention. Before my hand can touch his arm. Yes, Aurev. Oh. Victor turns his cold gaze towards me. I wanted to say thank you. Victor lifts an eyebrow before smiling unexpectedly. You're welcome. I'm glad a purpose has been found for you. Like, and now you can stop trying to clean. Because you give me more work. I stare at him, wide-eyed. A purpose? Did you not hear Master Roman's caveat for all of these things? They're to make you more comfortable so that you can focus on your true task, befriending the young master. Right. Are you feeling hesitant then? Yeah, I didn't sign up to become his friend. <laughs> I thought I was working. I hedge, not really wanting to face Victor's disapproval. Uh, a little. <laughs> I can try my best, but... I'm not sure how befriending him is helping him. Victor looks, to my surprise, torn. He taps his chin lightly with a single finger before looking at me in determination. Let me tell you something about the young master. Yes? The Nightmare Prince has not left the estate in 12 years. 12 years. Wow. 12 years? Why so long? Because of the accident. I'm assuming. <laughs> Victor opens his mouth, then shuts it. He smiles tightly. If you befriend the prince as you should, I'm certain he will tell you. If it were my choice, I wouldn't leave the mental welfare of the young master to a stranger, but I am not as foolhardy as Master Roman. I can't hide the dryness in my reply. Thanks for trusting in me. I truly appreciate it. Listen, I mean... Having somebody go full cyborg in your house. I guess that's something that you, you don't just tell random strangers. <laughs> that, that's basically what happened. I'm assuming. Victor stares at me flatly, and I try not to sigh. Such a lack of a sense of humor. I wonder again if Victor is just an android, or if there is something more behind his cool gaze. Has he learned how, has he learned how to laugh? and just chooses not to? Is he capable of disobeying? Is he, is he a rogue like me? I don't know the answers to even one of my questions, but what I do know is that I have an objective, to help the Nightmare Prince. I have my doubts, but I'm willing to try, in the least so I can express how grateful I am. Victor interrupts my processing thoughts with a clipped statement. Diego, you have an appointment with Dr. Champion soon. Zaffer, the library needs organizing. Got it! For all of Zaffer's hatred of menial labor, it seems he likes the library. How peculiar. Well, I mean, that doesn't seem peculiar to me. I mean, if they do love, like, pop stardom and music and probably every other type of acting endeavor. Maybe they like, like, plays. Probably in there reading Shakespeare and, like, reciting it, like, <laughs> to himself in the library, <laughs> acting through it. That's <laughs> so what I can see. <laughs> Diego salutes as he departs. I'll be seeing you around then, Aurev. See you later. And Aurev, don't forget to meet me in the library sometime so I can share my music with you. 
He disappears through the door, leaving Victor and I alone. In any case, I'll leave you to it. And leave me to it he does, walking away. The door shuts automatically behind him. I relax my shoulders, feeling relieved as I run my hands along the new fabric I can work with. I take out the tablet where I'd, where I'd sketched my initial designs. Let's see. The golden image of the sun setting into an ocean fills the page. I don't even know if the Nightmare Prince likes tapestries, or the ocean for that matter. If he doesn't ever leave his house, then maybe not this one. I swipe left for my next potential. It's the image of a coffee cup warming a pair of hands. Maybe that's too impersonal though. A little too generic. <laughs> I scrapped that one too, lightly tapping the tablet's hollow pen to my lips. Maybe I just need a change of scenery. I look around the garden for inspiration, my eyes splitting to the endless sea of roses. I should go with the rose, but that's not as warm as I was hoping. And then it comes to me, something warm, indoors and homey. A fireplace? I think of the way he spoke to me, so tentatively. Did I hurt you? I don't know much about him, but if I knew anything about the prince, it's that he cares about the feelings of others. On the fireplace, I should add a single rose. That said, he is rather difficult to get close to. After all, he seems completely unwilling to leave his room, much less the house. Oh, it's inspired by roses. That is very nice. And that makes sense. That's very nice. Maybe a rose in a glass case then. I work steadily then, making a list of the threads I'll need to execute my vision. And then... Then I get to work. And actually, I think I may take a quick break because we've been going for about two hours. I think I'm gonna take a quick like five minute break or so so I can go get some more water, use the bathroom, all that good stuff. So I also encourage you guys as well to take a quick little screen break maybe grab some water all that good stuff so we're gonna just oh first let's save let's do that yeah why not yeah save that and i guess we'll leave it on this screen hey when i press enter on accident i'm gonna try to make her in the sims when i get my computer Ooh, yes do it you definitely should do it like, low-key, I want to draw her.
Okay, I'm back. I had went to use the bathroom. So now I'm back. Yeah, so basically what happened was, um, I'm scared that, like, my, um, stream was going to cut off again if I swapped to my BRB screen. Because for some reason tonight, it's just, like, stream doesn't want to go between the the various um scenes but to be fair it could be my fault because i forgot to turn off my like desktop engine thing on steam i usually always quit it before i start streaming and i forgot to quit it today so it could be me <laughs> could be my fault but for some reason today stream has been cutting off if like I turn off the game or if I switch screens it's been freezing and just stopping um the stream so to combat that I was like I'll just turn my webcam off <laughs> in the live menu this time and hope for the best and I think that's what I'm gonna do from now on um I might still take a chance and put it onto a oh, wise creative network on there goodness gracious today stream just does not want to be great like of all days it wants to do this too but it's okay that's what what it's like to stream um i'm gonna probably still put it back on full screen mode because i personally like playing my games on full screen mode um hi Are you magic grandmother wouldn't give you any salmon Welcome, welcome back. Say hello to my, my cat if you guys can see her. Probably only see her butt though. But um, I think I am gonna go back to that. So yeah, I think I should still be good. It still seems to be running. And maybe what I'll do is like right before we um end, I will go back to full screen. I mean, to, to windowed. Maybe that'll help. Hello. Thank goodness I saved right before we stopped. <laughs> like, ima imagine I didn't save before I took my break. Oof, would have been terrible. Can you please get your butt out of my face? Thank you. Thank you for putting hair on my lips. Can, can you not? Please? Yes, for anybody who has not gotten to meet Rogue yet, this is my cat. This is my baby. Who wants attention. She's upset because my mom is heating up salmon and only gave her one little piece. How dare she? Even though we really don't give her much table food because I don't like her to get tummy aches. So, um, that's what we do. Hopefully she'll act right. She likes to get on my my stuff. As I weave steadily, there's a crackle of a speaker above me. I can guess why right away. Prince, are you there? I am. Yes. I lift an eyebrow. You know, it's rather rude to peep in on people without their knowledge. Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited to meet the prince. Don't mind, don't mind me <laughs> and my comments. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was curious about you, but but I guess I should have asked first. Yeah, you should have. You should have. Yes. Sorry. May I stay? Out here, like a peeping tom. Like like the um the guy from you. <laughs> what's his what's his name again? I forget his name. <laughs> like Joe or something. Bye, girly. I normally like to work alone in order to concentrate, but my true purpose is to befriend him. I decide to keep the conversation going. You may, yes. But only if you answer this question. Not you. <laughs> I 
What question? What makes you curious about me? His answer is immediate. Everything. I haven't spoken with someone new in a very long time. That's strange, isn't it? I think I am very strange. I try not to laugh. He's too honest, really. I don't know you well enough to say whether you're strange or not, but one thing's for sure. If you want to pop by, be sure to give me some sort of signal so I know you're there. Can you do that for me? I can, yes. How about this sound? It's a little abrasive. Oh, sorry about that. It's okay. How about something more gentle? Imagine you just hear like a siren every time he talks. Okay. He trails off for a moment. A beat passes before a new sound chimes out sweetly. I mean, that sounds like you got a text message, so I guess it's, it, 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 it fits better. <laughs> Lovely. You chose well. Oh. I... Thank you. Um, in any case, what are you doing today? I gesture for a moment, before realizing that it's possible that the prince cannot see me. As if to confirm my hunch, he speaks again. I can't see you. Well, thank goodness! You'd be an omega creep if you could see me and hear me whenever you so pleased. <laughs> then you really would be the guy from you. <laughs> I'm leaving a gift. Ah, I see. Why? For who? It's a secret. For you. There's a pause. Then softly. Really? Not at all. I laugh quietly. It's to thank you. Thank me? Thank me for what? I'm so confused. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying watching somebody's interpretation of your game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gotta be interesting. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying it though. <laughs> for letting me stay here. You don't know me and yet you extended kindness and welcomed me into your home. I appreciate that kindness, and I want to show it. The Nightmare Prince is silent for a moment. I don't think I'm all that worthy of thanks. You opened your home to me. Roman may have done the purchase, but you're the one who gave me a place to live freely. The Prince is the one who wanted me to destroy my proof of purchase. For that reason alone, he has my loyalty, and I will repay him in the best way I know how. I don't say the heavy thought, smiling instead. I see. We fall silent, and the only sound in the room is the delicate sound of thread rubbing against thread. Back and forth and in and out, back and forth and in and out. Prince. Yes? Do you have a favorite memory? No. I am the most content as I am now. I see. I was hoping for a bonding moment, but in reality, of course things wouldn't move so quickly. Oh well. I do. Have a favorite memory, I mean. I'm telling you, I've worked on this for like a year, so seeing someone enjoy it is gratifying. I can I can imagine. I'm very happy though that you're gonna you're getting this feeling. And thank you so much again, you guys, for like the code, because this is awesome. It's like the perfect way to end off Black History Month as well. <laughs> what is it? I can almost hear my master's voice as he hummed quietly beside me. Sixty years of weaving passed so quickly. And he thought of working at my master's side. I was wondering how old she might be. That, But that makes sense considering that like she was made for weaving and her master died. He got old. That makes sense. That's a long time. Hey. No wonder, no wonder she's so upset. Cause like her master made her feel like she was a person and all of a sudden her, his family is just like, eh, throw in the junkyard. <laughs> like that's wild. That is absolutely wild. Yes, and the perfect way to kick off. Women's History Month, exactly. Your master? 
His name was Lenthus. He would come to the shop every morning and ask me if I had eaten. I don't need to eat, of course, but telling him so would just make him laugh. <laughs> Absorbed in my thoughts, I work steadily, lost in a sea of things long past but never forgotten. If only I could go back in time. I wonder if he thought of me as a daughter. I can feel my palms getting hot as I dwell on the, dwell on the fact that that life is over now. I pause in my work to beat down the thread so the tapestry will be thick and not flimsy. That's so sad, cause like in a way, you he she was kind of like his daughter, you know, to have been working there for so long. If you look at her design, she's older looking than the rest of the rogues. You know what? That act, that makes sense to me because like even like some of her designs. I'll bet of course a lot of the rogues have like long sleeves. But there is something about her design that looks more like a uh, android. Like you can see many more of her joints, even at like even though it's underneath like the um the text box, you can see where like there's actual like mechanical joints even where her wrist is. Whereas like Diego, for example, his wrist is just looks like a straight up human's wrist, like it. So maybe it is a little more. Maybe she's like older. Like, not obviously, maybe, but like, obviously, she's older. And maybe Diego's younger. Because I did notice that. Oh, if I press H, you can see better? I pause in my work to beat down the thread so the tapestry will be thick and not flimsy. Let me see. Oh. Oh, yeah, you can see. Yeah. yeah even her fingers have the joints. Whereas, like, Diego's fingers don't didn't have like the little the little joints so this was still back when they were straight up just mechanical things oh that's so cool that's such a nice like such a nice little detail in her design thank you for telling me that because i'm so happy now that i can like actually see like the the rest of her form that's so cool Then I stop, resting my head against the wooden boards of the loom. The prince must notice my silence because he prompts me awkwardly. Are you alright? I quickly sit up straight. I'm fine. I say that, but my thoughts are racing. I should... Talk about Linthus or change the subject. Hmm. I want to know more about your owner, so I'm going to choose Linthus. <laughs> this was a good, kind man, too. Like you. I told you. Don't say you aren't kind. That would make you a liar, and I don't think you're one of those either. <laughs> I pause hesitantly, my hands pausing with me. Are you? He doesn't respond for a long moment before I hear him. Quiet exasperation in his voice. I try not to be. Good. My weaving resumes as I look steadily at the loom. That's all a person can ask for, android or not. The prince's voice blurts out uncomfortably. Is it bad that Roman purchased you? Do you want to go back? Why, so I could be scrap metal? <laughs> like, what choice do I have? Go back? There's nothing to go back to. He died about two months ago. I miss working alongside him, and I wish I could work with him now but his family sold me off without another thought so trust me i don't want to go back you're a strong person rf i can't help my surprise me strong yes i don't know you very well but i can just just tell somehow my mood darkens just slightly if only I felt strong right now. RF, are you all right? More or less. I think I just need to be alone for a little bit. I see. Then, I'll leave you. Thank you. There's a quiet chime as he disappears. I smile. 
I only had to ask once for some sort of warning, and right away, he did it. Like he respects me. I think of Roman, asking me how life was treating me, and echo myself. Very, very strangely. Shaking my head to get the thought out of my mind, I concentrate on the lube in front of me and prepare myself to work through the next few nights. I enter the garden to take a break from my tapestry when I see another figure, watering the plants dutifully. Diego, hey, I didn't know that anyone aside from Victor cared for the garden. Oh, I do from time to time when Victor's too busy. See, it's like now that like I can actually see stuff. It's you could very easily see the difference because I noticed right away when looking at Diego's hands. I was like, wait a second, Diego's hands do not look like her hands. I'm so happy I can see like the actual image now. It's so fun. <laughs> He's getting a diagnostic today, so I wanted to help out a little. I see. I sit at a table tiredly. I have enough battery to sustain myself, but I simply lack the motivation to work on the tapestry any longer. Everything all right over there? I haven't seen you around the house. He trails off as I nod. I've been working on a gift for the Nightmare Prince, and it's harder than I thought it would be. What do you mean? Aren't you a master crafter? Uh, I don't mean that kind of difficult. It's just... just that Lenthus, my old master, is gone, and working on the tapestry alone, it... it reminds me of him. Ah, I see. So you're sick in the hardcore rather than anything else. I nod. Exactly. I feel like I'm swimming in oil and somehow this close to drowning. Like you're treading, but on the cusp of drowning? Exactly, exactly. Hmm. Diego looks thoughtful. Have you considered deleting <clears throat> those old memories of Lenthus? Deleting them? I mean, that's fair, but deleting them? No! Diego doesn't look taken aback at all by my outburst, but I sputtered to apologize. I'm sorry, I just... I don't want to forget those memories. My past is a part of me, and as much as it hurts me sometimes, it also is what's keeping me from drowning in the first place. Exactly right, but you can move forward if you keep looking back. What do you mean? Without removing your old memories, the Nightmare Prince has made it possible for you to make better ones. You know, that's a fair point. I keep forgetting to add grief as a trigger warning. Oh yeah, that is true. Maybe you can make memories that won't make you so sad. I look down at my feet. Maybe so. I know how it feels to lose memories that used to keep you afloat. And while it does feel at times like I'm missing a piece of myself, at the same time, it's gratifying to know that my memories couldn't hurt me if they wanted to. I see. I'm not really advising that you lose all your memories. Just maybe don't dwell on them so much that they become a weapon of time to hurt you. Or you can make new memories that won't make you so sad. I nod slowly. Thank you, Diego. That really puts things in perspective. Glad to help. And I mean, honestly, I'm the king of lost memories, so of <laughs> course I have two cents to add. You definitely do have some lost memories, Diego. <laughs> you, you, you poor fellow. I open my arms and feel the breeze float through my fingers. My heart core feel my heart core lighter than ever. Maybe I should take another kind of break. Do you want any help then? Diego looks surprised for a moment before smiling tender before smire, smiling tenderly. This is how I can tell that I have been technically streaming for almost three hours. Technically three hours, because 
none of my times have been right anymore because my stream keeps cutting off. <laughs> but when I start to get to the three hour mark, my words start to cut off. And let me grab my water because I picked it up and I sat it across the room from me and I forgot to grab it on my way back. So. Because I am smart and <laughs> that's what I do. So thank you for that hydrate. <clears throat> you for smiling tenderly. You're sweet, Arav, but I think I've got it for now. I nod once. All right then. I'm feeling better than ever, so I'd better get back to working on the tapestry. Diego's advice gives me a much needed boost. Diego salutes me silently, going back to his task and I I tackle the tapestry again, determined to make something that will open the Nightmare Prince's heart. My eyes snap open at the sound of a knock on my workshop door. I sit up, feeling fully recharged, but also unprepared for the day. I yes? It's Victor. The Nightmare Prince hasn't seen you in a few days and has expressed concern. I requested that the prince not disturb you, but he felt it necessary. So here I am. <laughs> oh, I... I see. He was worrying about me? The thought makes me smile. I'm sure being the master of the house, he has many things to worry about. It's nice to imagine that by the merit of me being here, I become one of them. I'm fine. I stretch the joints of my body, making sure that everything is properly greased and working well. There's not a squeak, I notice with some pride. Of all the things I could say about humans, their craftsmanship is top-notch. I feel the same as I did when I was young and newly activated. I can't believe it's been so long. Discarding the thought, I stand, staring at the loom in pride. Every strand is aligned with the next, a total vision of perfection. Oh, have you've done it again. <laughs> it's nice to know that my skills aren't rusty from not weaving during those long months after Lenthus' death. Placing my hands on my hips, I have to admit I'm feeling pretty great, until I hear a light tap on the other side of the door. Victor. I forgot he was waiting for me on the other side of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm fine. Thanks for your concern. I open the door to let him in, but when I do, there is no one on the other side of it. I peek out into the hall where I see Victor's back, quickly walking away from my workshop. Wait, don't you want to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Not particularly, no. Like, I don't actually care. <laughs> Victor. Of course he doesn't. Well, come back anyway. I want you to see my work. <laughs> Victor pauses in the hall. Then he takes a sweet, sweet time to return to me, as if hoping I'll say, never mind. I won't, though, so I wait patiently for the reluctant android to make it back to me. On the loom, the tapestry is finished. As soon as he sees it, he scrutinizes it with, the, with a jeweler's eye. Excellent quality. Oh, is that a compliment? Sound like one of me. Victor looks at me as though I'm an imbecile, which maybe I am for trying to tease him yet again. In what way could excellent quality be taken as an insult? Fair enough. I want to take this to the Nightmare Princess room, if that's all right with you. It is not all right with me. I will deliver it to the young master. Thank you very much. I have some chores to finish first, but I will return for the young master's gift. Please be on standby. I'm not exactly surprised that Victor plans on upholding the rule that I that I not get a chance to see the master of the house. So I do the next best thing I can as Victor makes his exit. A few beats pass in silence before I call out. Prince. <laughs> so, of course, Arive, of course. There's a chime as he as he promised. You called? I'm finished with your gift. 
There's a sense of awe in the Nightmare Prince's voice. You wove an entire tapestry in a matter of days? Well, that's what I was made to do, man. Victor be blocking. <laughs> Literally. I did. I rubbed my nose lightly, grinning from ear to ear. And that's why they pay me the big bucks, so to speak. <laughs> Victor is going to deliver it to you when you have the time to accept it. So be prepared. I don't know if I'm hearing well or not, but... I can almost swear I hear a smile in the prince's voice. Then I am looking forward to receiving your fine work. He falls silent as he... As he is... The... He falls silent as he wants to do, but I won't... But I wait expectantly as I run my hands over the tapestry, feeling for knots and other unwanted hindrances. Hindrances. As Victor said, though, the quality is excellent. Thank you, Arev. I'll be right back. I want to summon Victor and have him bring me the tapestry. You're not going to come pick it up? Of course not! <laughs> huh. <laughs> and with that simple ha, huh, a chime whispers out, letting me know that the prince, the nightmare prince has departed. Of course! <laughs> Victor is the biggest hater in the house. I love him for it, though. I love Victor for it. <laughs> Sitting in the garden always gives me peace. So that's where I find myself on the days where I'm not weaving. Out here, my worries seem to lift right off of my shoulders. Until... You have received a summons from the young master. I just, I can just imagine Victor just randomly appearing behind me. Like, you have been summoned by the young master. Out of nowhere. Victor appears beside me, startling me with his abrupt announcement. Oh, you surprised me. So I did. In any case, please report to the prince's quarters. It was all he could muster to be able to do this. He probably was cursing under his breath the entire way over. All right. My heart pounds steadily in my chest. When I told him I was going to give him the tapestry, I assumed that would be the end of it, but an actual summons? How... how surprising. I'll be going then. Thank you for letting me know. Victor bows low, then takes his leave, and I follow silently behind him until our paths part. One thing my Twitch is gonna do on my phone is glitch! <laughs> he looks like a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> he almost was. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, that was perfect. I arrive outside of the prince's bedroom feeling tense. He said that he was looking forward to receiving it, so I have no reason to worry, and yet... I know I'm just imagining it, but his signal sounds strangely sweet to me. Aureth, you came. Thank you. Thank you. What do you mean? Victor told you that you are free to do as you like, didn't he? So I'm touched that you chose to come at all. I decide against telling him that if it's a summons, it doesn't really give me much of a choice. Hmm. Would such a thing as adding to a suggestion that his master may count as disobeying a direct order? The thought that Victor could be a rogue like I apparently am appears in my mind once again. But I set it aside to focus on something more important. So, did you enjoy the tapestry? That's why I've summoned you. I was going to have Victor do it, but I may as well ask its maker. Ask its maker what? If you could describe it to me, please. I looked at it through the cameras, but it doesn't feel like it's enough. I see. I shut my eyes, quickly recalling the memory. I wanted to give you the feeling of home, so I wove in a fireplace with flames flickering in the pit. What colors are the stones? How old is it? The stones are a rich russet red, brick, with a long flat top. It's not that old, because on that top, there is a fresh, brilliantly red rose in a glass case. A glass case, you say? I nod momentarily forgetting that the Nightmare Prince cannot see me. That rose, it reminds me of you. Someone who is delicate and needs protection. Someone who is a bit hard to get close to. Delicate? 
I intertwine my fingers behind my back as I try not to wince. Is he offended? His next words don't really help me figure it out. I... I don't know what to say. Evoking Beauty and the Beast in more ways than one. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Smiling uncertainly, I ignore my nervous feelings. You could start with... Thank you. Oh, you beat me to the punch. The prince lets it out then. A soft, quiet laugh that is so endearing that I immediately want to hear it again. You know... He trails off. I touch his door lightly with interest. It's still locked between us. You know, the way you described your tapestry reminds me of poetry. Poetry? I think for a moment. I'm not sure there's much that's poetic about the things I make, but who am I to dismiss, dismiss his thought? My poetry? I can't say I think myself a poet. Maybe you should consider it. Practice a little. He's quiet. I like to write poetry. Oh? I haven't for a long time, but I used to write poems regularly. What about? Oh. Well... For some reason, the filtered voice sounds embarrassed. About romance. Knew mostly. it. <laughs> it's gonna be like, love? It's about love, sir. You're hopeless romantic, sir. <laughs> this was happening. That's amazing. Writing romance well is difficult, or so I've heard. I'm sure you worked very hard to get where you are, so there's nothing embarrassing about it. Do you think so? Uh, I mean, of course not. No, it's not. Nothing's wrong with that. Romance isn't embarrassing at all. You are very much embarrassed right now. <laughs> I looked an eyebrow. Are you trying to convince me or yourself there? Both. <laughs> he clears his throat. <clears throat> I let out a laugh, and to my surprise, I'm not the only one. He chuckles quietly, the soft sounds of, of his laughter warm and bright. I stare at the door wide-eyed. I'm sorry, I just... I've never heard you laugh before. It's nice. Oh. Um, thank you. Saying something like, you're welcome, doesn't feel right, so I say nothing in reply. In any case, was that all you summoned me for? No. I wanted to give you something in return for your tapestry, but I couldn't think of what I could give. Oh, well, to be fair, that was to thank you first. So if you gave me something in return, it'd start the cycle all over again. Sure would. <laughs> I see. In that case, may I ask you a question? Of course. Will you return with another tapestry and describe it to me? I blink in surprise. Did you like the first so much? I did. Your work is beautiful, RF. I can only wish that I could create something that would give you the same feelings as I have from receiving it. I'm wondering if, um, the prince can't see. I mean, we obviously don't know, because we haven't met them. So, I'm curious to when we'll finally get to see the prince and stuff. Like, I know technically, like, they were in the trailer, but, like, let's be honest here. Like, despite the fact I see stuff, then I forget it. So, like, <laughs> until the prince is seen in the game, I'm gonna, I'm like, who? person I don't remember um. <laughs> you are gifted I wish that I could see your work with my own eyes why don't you then oh we're about to find out I'm Probably. guessing you have a physical body too right you mentioned not being human any longer so I've been thinking about what you could be and nothing came to mind cyborg oh I he trails off. I am a cybernetic organism. Do it! Cyborg! <laughs> a cyborg? Yep. Doesn't that make you human? Is that why you don't leave the estate? I'm going to say, is that why you don't Is that why you don't leave the estate? 
There's no response from the Nightmare Prince. I'm not surprised, since I've gathered by now that he doesn't exactly like to rush when he's thinking. Still, the silence hangs between us, long and thick. There are many reasons I do not leave the estate. That is one of them, yes. Well, it doesn't matter to me if you're a cyborg or not. The only thing I hear is the sound of someone who could be a friend. I see. Thank you. I think I should like to be friends as well. I hesitate for a long moment. If we're friends, it'd be nice to hear his real voice instead of the distorted one that comes through the speakers. Still, if he's not comfortable with me hearing him now, maybe he will later. An android can hope. I wonder if I can give a smaller request. Good. But, um, if you don't mind me asking, if we are to be friends, then may I know your name? I... He trails off. Then he speaks as if he didn't say anything at all. I have some things to take care of, but I'll <laughs> visit again if you don't mind. Ah, uh, well. I grin giddily. Point one for Arif. <laughs> Roman will be pleased. <laughs> I don't mind it. I'd love to have the company. Goodbye. Bye. The chime rings out, leaving me with the knowledge that I'm alone again. I wonder what I should do with my free time. Aside from weaving, there's got to be something I can do around here. Before I can decide, I hear a chiming sound once again. RF, if we are to be friends, then... You are right. I ought to give you a name to call me by. Oh. You don't have to give me one if you don't want to. I want to. He pauses so long that I think he will not speak. When he finally does, I can feel the engine steadily humming in my chest in anticipation. Quintus. I was once called Quintus. Hey, we know your name now. Perhaps it's bizarre, but the relief that rushes through is palpable. A real name, and one much less intimidating than the Nightmare Prince. Before I can reply, there is a chime that sounds out, signaling his second departure. Touched, I can't express the feelings floating through me. I leave the room, heading for the library. There's actually something on my mind, and I have a feeling neither Victor or, or Quintus will answer. And then I think after we do this next segment, I think the next time we fade to black, I think we'll end it for the night. Because I'm also hungry, and I got some food in the oven, so. I think it's it'll it'll be time so even though it says that it's only been 44 minutes it's technically been three hours that we've been playing <laughs> despite my stream hating me <laughs> when i arrive in the library to my surprise victor is already there lounging should i say something i wonder <sighs> that's like his only time to relax he reads intently, so I clear my throat to let him know that I've arrived. I know you're here as well. There is no reason to distract me from my reading. It's like, why are you bothering me? Let me be! The only time I have to not clean! Leave me alone! <laughs> I love Victor. <laughs> oh, I guess he wants to be left alone. Oh, I won't bother you. I'm just surprised to see that you can relax. And besides, I came to do some research. Leave this man load. <laughs> He's so done with you, Rev. Oh, Rev, please. <laughs> Usually, I only come to the library for reference books when I'm drawing clothes, but this is the first time I've ever had company. Up the stairs, I can hear Zaffir on the second level. As if summoned, he sticks his head out over the railing. Oh, Rev, darling, you've come by at last. Don't think I forgot about our little listening party. <laughs> I smile and reply as though I have, well, totally not forgotten what he's talking about. Oh, right. You wanted to show me your music, right? This is like that one dude that you know who like makes music 
and you know you not gonna like their music and you don't want to listen to it but they're like yo listen to my mixtape like i'm telling you it's fire like listen to my mixtape and you're just like oh send me the spotify link Send, send me the SoundCloud. I'll listen on my free time. They're like, no, 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 no. You gotta listen to it now. I got, I got earplugs. I got, I got headsets. I will, you know, we'll listen to it at the same time. I'll coach you through it. I'll let you hear it as it's going, so I can let you hear my thoughts. <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> I don't want to listen to this. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> Oh man. Correct. Are you free now, Bluebird? I shake my head. Actually, I came to do some research. To my surprise, Victor looks up in interest, suddenly no longer absorbed in his book. Oh? He snaps the massive tome in his lap shut. Before he does, though, I do get a glance at the title A Book on Gardening, hmm? I wonder why he reads a physical book when he can just download the information much faster. I think to ask, but decide against it. I don't want to annoy Victor any more than I already have. Zaffir joins us on the first floor. I'm certain I can help with that. I wanted to research cyborgs. Victor's gaze turns sharp. Why? Ooh. I need to know more about the Nightmare Prince, that's why. Girl. He told you of his status? I figured out his status, as you put it. For the most part, basically, yes. Quintus confirmed it. Oh, and me. you throwing out his government name in front of his angry butler who wants to protect him at all costs? You are treading on some thin ice, girl. Zaffir's been looking back and forth between us, but when he hears the name, he doesn't react. Victor's eyebrow, however, lifts. Wait. I'm not caught up. Bluebird, who's Quintus? Shoving, shoving this, his government name out in the open. Goodness. A rev. You need to relax. Victor ignores him. You know his real name as well? How? He told it to me just now. I tried to find out when I first got here, but it didn't really work out. He told you that in privacy to keep that to yourself that said it really seems the tapestry cheered him up i smile brightly but victor looks as though he's at a loss for words zaffir insists again come on don't leave me out of the loop <laughs> normally i would be irritated beyond belief that you disobeyed a simple rule i interject quickly you told me i wouldn't meet him but you didn't say i couldn't meet him as in take the initiative to meet him <laughs> Wait a second. Are you guys talking about the Nightmare Prince? You met the Nightmare Prince? I turned to him. I wouldn't say met since I haven't seen his face, but we're on speaking terms, yes. Look at a rev over here bragging. Like, yeah, I know the Nightmare Prince. I even know his name because, you know, he liked my tapestry so much that he told me about it. You know, he, we, we talk. We, we voice chat throughout the house, you know, just, just a little thing that we do. Not that, not that you guys would know, but you know, we're just, we're just like that. <laughs> How? <laughs> if I told you that you wouldn't meet him, does that not imply that going to his room and trying to speak directly to him is a non-negotiable faux pas as well? I grin up at him. Only technically, literally, no. Victor looks exasperated, but says nothing else in reply. He stands slightly straighter. Well, in any case, what's done is done. And Master Roman wishes that the two of you will get closer and draw Quintus from his shell. I'll allow it. Well, it's not like you can do much else about it anyway, right, Victor? <laughs> I don't tell him that it's a bit late for permission. Instead, I move on to my next subject at hand. My main subject at hand, even. I guess I can just ask you. I know that humans can be divisive, but is it such a bad thing to be part machine? Victor and Zaffir exchange looks. Zaffir is thoughtful for a moment. I've only been in a physical body for a year or so, 
but I admit, I have noticed my fans are less adoring when I walk the streets. Oh, you're a baby! Physically, at least. I mean, like, phys physically, physically, you're not a baby, but, like, I've only been in a physical body for years, so, like, you're a baby in that regard. Aww. <laughs> I never connected the dots, though. Victor nods in agreement. It is as Zephyr says. In human eyes, so it seems. The more machine you are, the less human you are. And humans certainly do look down on those who are less human than more. That's... I trail off. Lenthus never treated me that way. He was always... He treated me like a daughter. Or... Or at least what I imagine a daughter is treated like. Victor seems to gather as much, his eyebrows lifting ever so slightly. Just physically, he's much older than that. He's like eight. Okay, so a child. <laughs> so he's a child. He's a, he's a big kid. <laughs> so Quintus is rejected because he is, well, like us. It sounds sucky when you put it that way, but yeah, guess so. Precisely put. I feel a crushing weight as I imagine what Quintus has been facing all along. Facing all alone. No wonder Roman wants me to befriend him. Another human might reject him, but a rogue like myself? Maybe I could just find our commonalities and bring us closer together. I thought humans liked androids. As our creators, they should. Shouldn't they? Mm. I don't think that's how it works out, unfortunately. It's not as though we chose to be created. Humans suck sometimes, so, you know. Or to become self-aware rogues, as in my case. Humans are pretty fickle, Bluebird. I told you I'm getting replaced by a newer model, but there was a time when my tickets would sell out within minutes. Oh, not you started to underperform and they was like, let's get a new star in here. That sucks. I didn't need an upgrade. I mean, really, it doesn't make sense to have that much success and still get replaced. Especially when my virtual model was good enough. Now you were a VTuber and everything and you still got replaced. Victor snorts. <laughs> the day a human makes sense is the day a pig can take flight. Or however the human phrase goes. <laughs> I don't correct him, instead nodding in agreement. I find myself standing there awkwardly. Victor's never said so much to me at one time, so I can't help but feel as though I'm a bother. Well, I won't annoy you anymore. Thank you for your answers. Zephyr, can I ask for your assistance? Of course, Bluebird. Wait, there's just one thing I'd like to say, Alrev. If it has to do with the young master, it is no annoyance. I have kept watch over him since he was a mere boy. As such, I am invested in the young master's future. If you are able to help him, I will support you, no matter the cost. I touch my chest lightly. Thank you, Victor. Hey, Vic Victor just in daddy mode, that's all it is. He just cares about Quintus. He nods once and returns to his book. Zapper leads me to another section of the library which has an interactive interface. We both ignore it. After all, it's made for human touch and my hands will be ignored. Instead, Zapper gives me the network passcode so I can connect to the machine directly by placing my hand against the metal surface. Right away, my eyes light up as I download the information directly from the machine. Cyborgs. The definition pops up right away. A, part, the, a portmanteau of cybernetics and organisms. But I want more than that. How did Quintus become a cyborg in the first place? I search fruitlessly for a moment when Zaffir speaks from his spot beside me. I have some search suggestions. Do you know how long the Nightmare Prince has been here? Victor's words come back to me. The Nightmare Prince has not left the estate in 12 years. More than a decade. Maybe you can narrow the articles down by... By year. Got it. 
Not y'all out here uncovering his whole past before he can tell y'all. You can also look for news on cyborgs, as well as his real name. Maybe you can find something, Bluebird. Quintus was a minor 12 years ago. I don't think any articles will have his name in them. Zaphyr shrugs. Since we're in an opulent mansion, Arev, I have a feeling people will know who his parents are. I search the internet. Specifically, I'm looking for news articles from over a decade ago, right around the time Victor said he'd started caring for Quintus. Then, I find it. I set a set of articles dated from 12 years ago. Local child to be the first to have a completely reconstructed body. It's cyborg! I read steadily, a knot in my stomach. A young survivor of the Red Rails train accident that resulted in the deaths of over 200 passengers will be receiving the first of a total 20 surgeries in an attempt to reconstruct his body. That's wild! Oh my goodness, the pain he must have experienced from that accident. Like, I know I've, I've been saying it jokingly, like, the accident, but like, oh my goodness. This had, to, this had to be such a dramatic event for him. The surgeries, said to have a projected cost of 60 million credits, have sparked a debate of the quality of life this young child will grow to have, as his prosthetics will need to be replaced as he grows. Cyborg activists are hoping that this will be a major step forward in cyborg rights, as those with cybernetic parts are still considered subhumans due to the loss of their natural body parts. Oh, and then that sucks. Because then that means that you have a whole bunch of people who are technically still people. They just, you know, lost like a limb or something. And now they have the gift to be able to still use their body, but because it's not natural, they're seen as lesser, and that sucks. Just as I thought. Victor wasn't kidding when he said that cyborgs were looked down on. A quick glance at the comment section makes me wish I hadn't. Has Quintus seen these things? Read them? He definitely has. I think to read on, but decide against it. I want to know what this Red Rails accident is all about, but I want to hear it from him. Or someone. Anyone in this house. To be a cyborg, you have to be at least 60% machine. Okay, that's good to know. So you have to be technically, like, more machine than human. So if you just have, like, a mechanical leg, you're not a cyborg. But if, like, maybe, like the bottom half of your body is cybernetic, then you would kind of be considered a cyborg, probably. Got you. So, and then it's like, it even, I could even see where, just based off of the way that this is written, where like, cyborg, even just people who are slowly getting more cybernetics, like, I could even see where like, slowly they're getting more glances depending on how many pieces they get. Like a leg, they're just like, oh, cool, you got, you're able to walk again. But then, like a foot gets added on, and they're like, you you walking on thin ice? Like that sucks. I'd help you, but I've seen neither hide nor hair of this Quintus. That said, I'll be rooting for you, and in the meantime, he grins. Don't forget to check out my music, Bluebird. <laughs> check out my SoundCloud, though. I mean, I know you're busy right now, but you gotta... I'm gonna send that Spotify link so you can listen to it. I'm telling you, it's some hot fire right there. You gotta listen to my Spotify. You will not regret it. <laughs> sure thing. Right after I read a little more. I have a feeling that discovering more about the accident won't make me very happy, but... If this is how I can support Quintus, then, then I am all too willing to try. All right. So I had said before that I was going to do my 
ending of the stream now. Um, after the next, like, fade to black. So that I can eat, and because I've been streaming for about three and a half hours. I'm not gonna lie, though, I'm very nervous to switch over to my other screen. <laughs> because every- each time I've switched to, like, the, a different screen, or, like, done something, my stream today has ended. So I'm a little nervous about it, so I think today I'm just gonna kind of do my ending stuff on my regular live screen and then we'll just switch over um because then at least i can make sure we safely go through the raid you know so but yeah i'm really enjoying it this has been so great once again thank you guys so much for the code to this game i'm i'm so happy to be playing it and if anything because this is already an indie game and i technically don't have another indie game planned we will probably play this again on Monday. I will only say there is a slight 50-50 chance if I get to stream on Monday, or if I do stream on Monday, I might end up streaming later on Monday because I may have something that I have to do that day. But whatever happens, the next Monday that I stream for Indie Monday, we will be picking up where we left off on this. But yeah, this has been really, really good. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun um so thank you guys again once again i am going to even though i know it's up in there if you want to check out the itch.io for jellyfish parade feel free to check out the link you can also if you are interested in checking out bell automata you can always wishlist it on steam i believe it is coming out in like um chronicles so i believe there's going to be three chronicles and each chronicle i think has two half ways of people that you can choose um so you can feel free to wish list it so you can stay up to date with all of that if you are enjoying this i will probably continue this on monday um little announcements for me to try to remember um so we did this today which was a big announcement oh the other announcement that I didn't get to tell you guys earlier um, because so much stuff has been going on. But for anybody who has not been on socials and who has not been in my Discord, I am now officially a um, official member of Brown Girl Gamer Co's stream team. So that is now a thing. That was my big announcement that I've been waiting to tell you guys. Um, so I will be streaming over on BGGC's channel twice a month now. And I will also always let you guys know ahead of time on like Discord um, when I'm planning to stream or at least the day before or like the day of, I will, I will still put an announcement in Twitter and in Discord when I'm planning to stream. I'm planning to hopefully do like some games and art on there because at the end of the day, I'm an artist like top priority i game but i do art that's my main thing um <laughs> but i digress but that's my the bigger announcement is that now i am part of bgc stream team also if anybody wants to check out any of my links to find me anywhere feel free to check out my link tree it has literally everything you need to find about me my twitter my instagram my art shop my commissions um coffee Everything that you need to find about me is in my link tree. So feel free to check that out. Um, I enjoyed lurking and watching. I have this on my wish list and can't wait for everyone to get their story. Like, yes, I'm so excited, especially because like, even though I do tend to play a lot of narrative games now, I actually don't play many games like this. Um, not even necessarily because I don't want to, just I just never get a chance to and I forget and I don't know where to look um so this has been really fun i'm really enjoying it um i can't wait to like see more of the storylines or even continue to see the storylines that we're doing now you know so super excited about it but yeah thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i will be back on wednesday we'll be back on wednesday with art um other side note though just so, don't mm, 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 nope nope just so you know, um, I will also be streaming on BGGC's channel on Thursday for a special stream. I will be playing a demo for another indie dev um, called Bitter Silver. 
another narrative game. <laughs> and so I will be over there playing Bitter Silver and I will get to have a slight little code chat talking to one of the devs and the um, head of BGGC to like kind of talk about our experience playing it and how it was being made, stuff like that. Sorry, my cat got back on my PC. Um, so that will be happening on Thursday, but of course I will let you guys know. Um, Oh, you know that, Deb? Awesome. Yeah, so I'll be I'll be playing that on... Don't get back on my PC. So I will be playing that on Thursday. Very excited. At 7 p.m. for anybody who doesn't know. EST. Um, but yeah, let's see who we're going to raid. Do, do, do. Because there's a couple people on. Let's see. How long has BGGC been on? Please don't get on my PC, girly. You are doing so good. You're doing so good. Don't do it. Not, 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 no. Come on, Twitch. Work for me. Technology, work for me. Don't do, don't embarrass me more than you've already embarrassed me today. <laughs> okay, I just gotta get through the ad. Though um, I feel as though BGGC may be ending soon because sometimes they um they don't go longer than three hours. They might be stopping, so we may actually go to Janae. I'm also waiting for this ad so I can actually see um how how they're going. You do all right actually we're gonna go over to bggc we're gonna go raid bggc show them some love because i think they are still going at least so i'm gonna set that up for us for the raid if my stuff lets me <laughs> all right there we go start raid Hey! All right, so feel free to copy down the raid message. We're gonna go over there and show BGGC some love. Right now, Bran is playing some Apex. So we're gonna go over there, say hello. I will slightly raid and run because I wanna go eat some food. But thank you guys again so much for coming by. Also, thank you so much, Owl and Agea for coming by and hanging out with us while we played your game. Super duper appreciate it. It's been a blast to be able to chat with you and even get to hear your like perspectives and different little tips and info about the game while we played. It was, a, it was an awesome time. Super, super excited about it. So we will be playing this again either next Monday or the next Monday, depending on how my day ends up going next week we'll see i might be helping with a mural for something so um yeah but thank you so much for hanging out with me i super appreciate it especially hanging out with all of the technical difficulties but i will see you next time so i hope you take care of yourself get some rest and yeah i'll see you on wednesday or next time i see you see ya. peace